Rovers too in the last game. So if Cove can get something tonight, it's game on for playoffs to Cove, Kieran. Yeah, and Ramblers out on the pitch now. They're wearing their white kit tonight with the claret shorts and uh, white socks. So that's the way they line out. And Longford now on the pitch as well in their traditional red and black stripes. Just looking at the Longford bench, Tony, a bit of a mixture of youth and experience there. You've got Ben Lynch, an under-19 player. Uh, Luke Dennison, the backup goalkeeper. You've got the experience of Dean Zambra. Uh, and then you've got players like Niall Barnes, Lida Latifa, haven't played an awful lot of League of Ireland football. Callum Warfield, another youngster on the bench. And then you've got the vastly experienced Joe Gorman. So a good mixture of youth and experience there on the town bench. Yeah, Lido has only played four games for Longford Town this season. So... Uh He's on the bench, as you say, experience and youth on the bench for Longford Town. And Longford with Zambra been on the bench tonight yeah, as well, just to mention... Of course, he had concussion, that's why he didn't play yeah, last week against Yeah, uh, just to mention, Lee Stacey is the man carrying the armband tonight for the town. So Longford Town players just in a huddle and uh, the officials are just coming out onto the field of play now. And tonight's referee is Gavin Colfer. The assistants are Alan Sherlock and Alan Dunn. And the fourth official is Owen O'Shea. And of course, sponsors of Longford Town is Bishop's Gate. It's Bishop's Gate Stadium and Munley as well, Munley Group as well. So Munley Group and Bishop's Gate, the main sponsors of Longford Town FC. And of course, the stadium, Bishop's Gate, named after the sponsor. So it's coming to crunch time now. Longford Town, can they get the three points that will definitely guarantee them, no matter what, a place in the playoffs? But as you said, Kieran, it's crucial to finish in either second or third place yeah. and get home advantage in the one off playoffs, which is a change from the two legged because of the COVID 19 situation. Yeah, of course, this game, I suppose, has been played against a, a backdrop of uncertainty, everything going on in the country at the moment. Uh, but look, the players just have to put that to the back of their minds now, get the job done book themselves a spot in the playoffs and fingers crossed we'll, we'll be in a position to, to have those playoffs but uh, great to be streaming the game tonight as I said if any, any, anyone is watching yeah, give it, give the link a share there'll be plenty of neutrals looking for some live League of Ireland football tonight and they can get it free here on our Facebook page so great to have you watching the stream tonight and just looking at the top scorers, Kieran, two UCD players at the top of the goal scoring chart. Joe Yo Mahadi with 15, and Colin Whelan with yeah. 14. Then you Mark Doyle dropping in 12. Then you Rob Manley in 9. And Brandon Cavanagh after scoring today in the 3 1 win for Shams, too, also in 9 goals. Yeah, the two UCD boys in particular, what a season they've had. Um, Maddie was a player we knew about that we were probably surprised not to see him with a Premier Division club. Colin Whelan's come out with a blue. He had a great pedigree at underage level uh, with Waterford, but what he's done at a senior level this year has been absolutely superb. But the game is now underway here at Bishop's Gate as Cove kick us off. And A. Durvin has possession of the ball. He loses it there to uh, Stephen O'Leary, but Longford Town get it back. But it comes out to the number eight, Pierce Phillips, the captain. And Longford Town have it again. A. Durvin to Dean Byrne. And Dean Byrne, well, he's curled out by two or three uh, Cove Ramblers players. And that's Ian Turner who dispossessed him. And Dean Byrne runs at the keeper, Sean Bannon, who launches that downfield. It's cleared by the head of uh, Joe Manley and now comes with Cove again on the attack and comes out to Ian Turner and Ian Turner plays inside ricochets off Dean Byrne back to Ian Turner but he lets it go out for a throw in to Cove Ramblers so Cove Ramblers have a throw in about uh, 20 yards inside 20 yards from the Longford Town end line and it's going to be taken by John Kavanagh the right back here for Cove Ramblers looking for options here and the run has been made by Pierce Phillips but he's not opting for that he goes to Ian Turner instead just down the corner back to Kavanagh who whips it into the post and it's whipped into towards Stephen O'Leary but under pressure he uh, puts it wide from Mick McDonald there so but a good move uh, by uh, by Cove Ramblers that was actually Nathan Coleman with the effort uh, he's wearing number 14 so Nathan Coleman with the half chance there for Cove yeah two of the more experienced Cove players linking up there John Kavanagh and uh, Ian Turner down this uh, this side here in front of us section O side of the ground for those that are familiar with Bishop's Gate and uh, yeah good link up play between them good cross and uh, Nathan Coleman threatened to get in front of his marker just for a second but luckily from a Longford point of view he couldn't get the right contact on it and it just flew over the bar but my uh, first analysis of the night Tony I have to say that Cove goalkeeping kit I'm not impressed at all it looks like someone's someone's drove over it uh, Ian Turner dispossessed there comes to Matthew O'Brien who uh, knocks it back to oh it's Shane Elworthy ricochet but it comes out to the number 14 there Nathan Coleman and it eventually comes back with Lee Stacey and Lee Stacey with just slow proceedings down here looks like uh, that when they're attacking that uh, Cove Ramblers are playing a front three and Ian Turner who usually plays midfield I thought he might have slotted into the full back position but he's not 
Uh, the midfielder not in the full back position today and he's advancing forward as a forward three with the other two up front when Cove are on the attack. So they're playing kind of three up front with Ian Turner slotting in there with number 19, Conor Drynan and the other forward there. So they're playing by the looks of three up front, Kieran. Yeah, they're definitely leaving two up there uh, all the time, Tony. Uh, as you said, then Ian Turner is tucking in from time to time. But uh, it's very noticeable, Cove. A lot of their attacks have come down this side just in front of us. Uh, Carl Chambers, he's not what you'd call a natural fullback. I wonder if they've just maybe targeted that and they're going to try and get at him early and see how good he is defensively. It's, uh, Darwin just takes a loose touch and Cove come away with possession. Yeah, that was Pierce Phillips with a good play there, but Longford Town have it again. It's uh, nipped back by uh, Dylan Hand to Lee Stacey, the goalkeeper. He slots it out to the right and comes off the head of Shane Elworthy. Ricochets about and Elworthy gets it back again to Dylan Hand. Dylan Hand to Matthew O'Brien. Matthew O'Brien no, doesn't uh, get that pass off perfectly and Cove come away with it. And it's now with uh, Pierce Phillips. Pierce Phillips is well challenged there, but Longford Town do manage to keep possession. It will look like they might lose it there. And it's uh, played down the wing, but it comes back out to Cove, and Cove will just build from just inside their own centre circle. Great block down there by Adam Evans, and Adam Evans has Dean Byrne to his left. He plays it to Dean Byrne as John Kavanagh goes across to him. Dean Byrne keeps it in play. He puts it back with the outside boot. He, he nutmegs Kavanagh, and he shoots, and it's blocked. Good play by Dean Byrne. He needs support though here and he gets it in the shape of Kyle Chambers and Kyle Chambers takes a touch out wide right and plays it into the box towards Rob Manley but it is cleared by the Cove defence or is it? It is now but it's hooked out for a throw and so good pressure there by Longford Town especially by Adam Evans, Karen. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, good charging down by Adam Evans as you say there, Tony but some really good individual footwork from uh, Dean Byrne uh, getting by a couple of uh, Cove defenders getting the shot away it hit the uh, Cove man in the chest there was a couple of appeals from the Longford players for hand ball it was uh, never going to be that case but uh, good positive signs for Longford early on but overall a very very frantic start to the game both teams pressing the life out, out of each other trying to turn over possession as quickly as possible but Longford just starting to get a foothold on proceedings now and just as I say that commentator's curse Cove win possession back again but now once again they're unable to hold it it's with Longford it's with Matthew O'Brien who's shown some nice early touches and he's forced to go back to a Durban and Longford Town still holding on to possession here and it uh, comes back here to uh, is that A. Durvin there and it ricochets out and it's Nathan Coleman putting the town defender under pressure and uh, Longford Town have been awarded is it a, a throw or a free, a free kick? kick. It free looks like kick. Mick McDonald may have just got a bit of shove in the back there but again all uh, very very frantic at the moment there's lots of uh, hard work and industry out there but you'd like to see one of the sides just maybe get their foot on the ball and show a little bit of quality now in the next five minutes or so and here comes Carl Chambers just inside his own half on the left. He's playing at left back this evening. Of course, very versatile player. He can play right back, he can play left back, he can play up front, he can play midfield. Yeah. So a real utility player as Lee Stacey has possession of this ball here. And Lee Stacey just uh, bringing it outside of his box, takes another touch and now he launches that forward towards Rob Manley. And Rob Manley hits his chest but it... Uh, is a block down there by a Cove defender and it's Lee Devitt that uh, blocked that but Longford Town win a uh, free yeah, kick. Yeah, no, he's given a free kick. Yeah. The, uh, the Cove man just left the dangling leg out there uh, and made contact with Adam Evans who's done well to win the free kick. So good position here for Longford now to whip one in, whip one in and put uh, Sean Barron under some early pressure. Yeah, and of course, Longford Town with that great win, bouncing back from the defeat against Galway. Um, we won't uh, harp on about that game too much. I think much, that's why last week's clean sheet was probably so important yeah. as well. It was nearly as, as important as scoring the three goals. It'll just uh, get the confidence levels back up in that back four and Lee Stacey after that, that, that was, awful, awful night here against Galway. Oh, stop. It, it uh, was Longford Town's seventh clean sheet of the season. And uh, here comes the free kick from the right towards... Still in hand with the header! And a great save by Barron in the Cove goals. Lovely delivery from uh, Adam Evans over on the, the stand side. He's just floated it in there. Unfortunately, there wasn't an awful lot of pace on the ball, so Dylan Hand had to try and generate his own power on the header. And he made a good, clean contact with it, but he just wasn't able to get enough power in it. And it was an easy save in the end for, for Sean Barron. But that's it. A great delivery in there from Adam Evans. It certainly was a great delivery and Longford Town need more of that throughout the course of the evening. And here come Cove Rambers playing up from left back position, trying to play that down to Nathan Coleman and it hits off Nathan Coleman's head and goes out for a Longford Town throw and Shane Elworthy will come across to take this. Uh, Shane Elworthy who uh, I suppose had that throw and that Matthew O'Brien picked up on for Longford Town's goal against Cabin Teeley last week. And now here comes Mick McDonald launching that long, but that's the no man's land. And Rob Manley could 
be judged to have committed a foul. No, there. I think it's just a genuine clash of heads there. You'd be worried for the for the Cove man. He seems to be okay, but just as that ball was played over the top, Rob Manley's gone gone to turn and go on the run, and he's ran straight into the to the Cove man. There was a, a complete accident, but that could have been a, a nasty clash of heads. But thankfully, it looks like everyone's up and okay. I'd be very surprised if the referee takes this any further. That was a genuine accident out there. So the referee just uh, maybe articulating towards the goalkeeper. He's looking for the ball. Yeah, I think he's indicating that he stopped play for a, for a head injury, so he's just going to restart play with a drop ball. Yeah, that looks to be the case. And it's going to... They're still debating. <laughs> so the referee is going further back here now. Inside the Longford Town half, he's just going to have a word with somebody, is he? I'm not sure why he's gone that far up no. the pitch. Um, anyway, uh, it looks like he's given Longford the possession. That's that's strange. Uh, it is strange, there, to be honest with you. <laughs> and I think Longford knew that was incorrect because they've just booted the ball straight back to, to Sean Barron. So some fair play on show there early on. Certainly was fair play from Longford Town. As Cole will try and build from the back, Ian Turner to John Kavanagh. John Kavanagh will launch that ball in, but it's... Uh, cleared by Mick McDonnell that was an important header from Mick McDonnell there Tony because the Cove man was just threatening to get in behind so he used his height quite well there and Rob Manley that was just a little bit over exuberant there just needs to be careful because he doesn't want to start um, accumulating fouls or he might get himself in trouble he's going to get a word here from referee uh, Gavin Colfer now now the only one from Longford Town uh, squad who's in yellow card trouble is A. Durvin A. Durvin has four yellow cards so if he picks up a yellow card this evening he will serve a one-match suspension as uh, that ball is played across to Charlie Lyons, the top goal scorer for Cove this season with four goals. And now a build from the back again. He launches that ball down forward there to Conor Drynan. Conor Drynan holds on to that. He lays it off, but Shane Elworth would just knock that back to Lee Stacey. And Lee Stacey with a real Gary Owen there. And uh, Cove, uh, two Cove players get in each other's way, but it's not back by Lyons, back to Sean Barron the Cove keeper and he plays that ball out there to the number 24 is Greg Henry and now it's launched forward and it will be a throw in to Cove. Yeah Cove are making their intentions clear very early on here it's going to be a very direct game they're looking to get that ball in behind the back four and try and turn them but so far the likes of Mick McDonnell and uh, and uh, Adam Evans back there they've stood the test up quite well so far they've, they've caught out some crucial interceptions so let's hope that continues from a, a Longford point of view this time it's uh, Carl Chambers who has to, to win his duel in the air and he does so quite well Dean Byrne now with the ball at his feet forced back to Joe Manley he'll have to go to Lee Stacey who's going to have to clear his lines here and he gets a good clean contact didn't get the best distance on it Stacey but it's back with a Longford man now that's Carl Chambers yeah good play by Carl Chambers tries to release Adam Evans will he get there and he does get there, and Adam Evans holds on to possession, and it just ricochets off him and goes ah, out unlucky. for a, a goal kick. And I have to say, that was a great play there by Darrell Walsh, who was the man who was tracking Adam Evans back there. Brilliant ball from Carl Chambers, though, over the top into the space, and Evans, good first touch. He, he squares up his man, tries to take him on, and lucky for him, it just ricocheted off his shins and away for, for a goal kick. But again, good positive signs from Longford. We have... Um, John Kavanagh gluing himself to the touchline here looking for that uh, ball to be delivered but the goalkeeper Sean Barron goes short with, short with this one but it's, it's going to go back to him so I think he's probably going to eventually clear this one long up the pitch and he launches this but he slips as he does so but it still finds a cove player ricochets off a couple of players and now Longford Town's Matthew O'Brien tries to play to Dean Byrne Dean Byrne gets it plays it back to Matthew O'Brien under pressure Ian Turner he knocks it back to the goalkeeper Lee Stacey and Lee Stacey will just calm proceedings down and he's looking for options plays it out to Joe Manley and uh, Joe Manley under pressure there from Connor Dryden and Paul Ball Lee Stacey comes across and gets in there ahead of Nathan Coleman that could have been a disaster for Longford Town I'm, I have to say I'm surprised the referee hasn't given um, a pass back there against Lee Stacey now perhaps uh, the Cove player might have just got a touch on the ball and forced it onto his hands if he has then the referee's made the right decision but uh, that was an awful square ball across the Longford Penley area and they're very very lucky not to be punished Lee Stacey just to his credit did enough to be a nuisance whether he used his hands or not he got out there and he might have blocked it with his che chest perhaps that's what the referee uh, if he didn't to do that with. Nathan Coleman had a goal yeah so he's done well Lee Stacey that could have been a disaster for Longford corners whipped in towards the front post headed away by Shane Elworthy but Cove will have another one 
So exerting a bit of pressure here, Cove, and uh, getting more joy, I think, down this right-hand flank than when they Yeah, we, the we kind of pinpointed that earlier on. That seems to be their their, their main outlet at the moment, um, for whatever reason, something they might have pinpointed before the game. But uh, just going back to that pass from Joe Manley, he's he's received the ball, he's, he's gone back. There seems to be a lot of balls going back to Lee Stacey early on, a lot of passing in the back four, maybe overdoing it at times, and it almost cost Longford dearly there. There's a lot of pushing and shoving, and the referee is just going to come over and have a word. It looks like... Mick McDonnell and uh, Charlie Lyons, the two players that are having handbags in there. Yeah, Charlie Lyons, the central defender with four goals this season for uh, Cove, their top scorer, as Ian Turner is just waiting to take this corner. And uh, he's speaking to Mick McDonnell, and he's also speaking to uh, Charlie Lyons as well. So uh, just getting a polite ticking off from the referees. Ian Turner will now be allowed to still, take this corner from the left and still a lot of pushing going on there is indeed and it comes in and it hits off the head of Chanel Worthing goes out for Cove Rambler's third corner in a row so exerting a good bit of pressure here at the Cork side but it's still nil-nil here between Cove Ramblers and Longford Town here at Bishop's Gate I think that's Conor Drynan taking the corner from this side of the pitch now and he's just going to launch this in towards the near post again it Third Head header off. in a row from Chelworthy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be a third corner in a row now for, for That's Cole. four. Four in a row, sorry, yeah. If he's made three headers in a row, of course it's a fourth in a row. But um, one of the Cole players just down holding his lower back. It is quite a physical penalty area in there at the moment. There is a lot of uh, pushing and shoving going on. And it's uh, Nathan Coleman who's been very, very busy and involved so far in the opening uh, 15 minutes or so. And Ian Turner will take this corner from the left. And he gives the signal and he launches again into the danger area, but that's Great too hands. close to Lee Stacey. Great hands is right. And there is just a drizzle starting to fall here now as well, so it is a wet ball out there. But No, uh, Matthew O'Brien got involved there. He needs to just uh, watch his discipline. <laughs> have to the, say, I just took my eyes off that for a moment, so I, I missed that. But there is a... There sorry, is a, it's not Matthew O'Brien, it's still in hand. It's still in hand. Yeah, there's a Cove player down holding his head here. The referee should have stopped play immediately. But uh, Cove players very, very unhappy. They're shouting over at this linesman on the far side. They feel that there's been some type of off the ball thing but well it's Dylan Hand who was involved there and he might say uh, depending on what the assistant referee saw there he might go across and have a word with him so the referee is just uh, having a little word with Lee Stacey there while he gathers his thoughts and will he go across and speak to the assistant referee He's I think if the assistant had seen something he probably would have raised a flag probably, or given him some yeah. type of signal so uh, I have to say I didn't see it myself but um Look, it's been a game, as I said, where there's been a lot of physical stuff already. Nothing over the top, you know, players fighting their, their battles and trying to win their individual duels. But it is threatening at times just to, to boil over. So no, I didn't see the incident myself. I just saw that it was Dylan Hand who was the closest to the player. So obviously he... Uh, from a refereeing yeah. point of view, you know, the next five minutes or so is crucially just any tackles that go in that are slightly over the top. He's probably going to clamp down with a yellow card and just try and take any bite out of the game. He's actually looking over at his, uh, his linesman here, looking for some advice. But as I said, I don't think the linesman's seen anything, so... I'd imagine I play like will mo just resume. Mo most other people following the ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tough uh, job lines, and of course, because you have to follow job. the back four as well, and you're always moving, you know. So it's it's not easy to keep your eye on the ball, the play, and and everything else, the the, the, the final man as well. So of course, tough, last time tough Cove had that very impressive four 0 win away to Wexford at their biggest uh, away win in 13 seasons. Darrell Walsh. Uh, Pierce Phillips, Conor Drynan and Stephen O'Leary with the goals in that impressive 4-0 victory away to Wexford. I mentioned that Longford Town having their seventh clean sheet last week against Cabin Teeley. The first five clean sheets were in the first six games. <laughs> so, and then I think it was game 14 against Athlon Town and then the Cabin Teeley game last week, the seven clean sheets. Uh, and of course, Cabin Teeley have been a bogey team in recent years. I think that was the right. first win since maybe 2015 or so. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, oh no, sorry, it was 2018. It was uh, six games since Longford had beaten Cabin Teeley. So they finally brought that uh, run to an end last week. So they'll be delighted with that. And who knows, they might have to play them in the playoffs again this year. But the way things are going at Cabo at the moment, you wouldn't be too confident that the wheels have, have well and truly come off them in, in recent weeks. A 5 1 hammering last night against uh, UCD. But looks like play is going to get back underway here. Uh, Daryl Walsh up to his feet and showing no ill effects. Uh, thankfully he's just been checked over by the physio and I'm sure he'll be rejoining play as Longford send the ball up towards Rob Manley but Cove intercept it and they'll start from the back again with a direct ball up towards their attack but it's over hit and that'll run into the hands of Lee Stacey 
Yeah, Charlie Lyons there, the centre half with the clearance there. He's the man who's been asked to uh, mark Rob Manley. Longford Town played out from uh, the other Manley, Joe Manley, to Carl Chambers. He cuts inside Ian Turner. He's about 10 yards inside the cove half. Tries a little dink ball, but that's let run through to the keeper by Greg Henry, all the way through to his goalkeeper, Sean Barron. So miscommunication there uh, in that Longford Town attack. And call, that cove call back to their, uh, their, full, their full ship here. 11 men on the pitch. So Darrell Walsh uh, back on the field of play as Sean Barron launches that towards Ian Turner. Joe Manley wins that header and puts it out for a throw in to the Ramblers, who of course uh, won the earlier contest between the sides, two goals to nil. Stephen O'Leary and Connor Drynan with the goals. And I think it was nil nil half time in Cove, getting two second half goals yeah, to win. Longford, Longford were well beaten that day, they were very, very poor, and uh, Cove earned themselves a free kick, and they're a side that always caused issues with set pieces so Longford won't want to give give away too many of these and of course Longford as we know conceded I think four um, if not five set pieces against Galway in that 6-2 uh, defeat so after being 2-0 up on 44 minutes yeah they, <laughs> they definitely don't want to be giving too many of these away and it's going to be John Cavanagh to take this free kick for, for Rams some people don't want to be reminded of that Galway game <laughs> as Cavanagh launches this free kick in from the right it's a good delivery as well comes out to A. Durvin here for Longford Town He's going to just charge forward and he gets by John Cavan and turn, cuts back inside, plays it back to Joe Manley and Joe Manley plays it across to Lee Stacey. No danger this time. Remember Nathan Coleman almost latched onto a poor uh, square almost ball Almost spoke across. too soon, Tony. Yeah, nearly did. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Lee Stacey, poor. I think he's had as many touches as anyone on the field. They're definitely going back far too often here, Longford, and they're causing problems and for And Irvin's going to be suspended. Uh, get a one match suspension he, he uh, high boot on Ian Turner and that means A. Durvin will serve a one match suspension I did just say to you about three minutes ago I said the next five minutes the referee if there's even anything that hints on, on going over the top he's going to come out with a yellow card he wants to just take the the, the sizz out of this game and um, that's what he's done there by giving a yellow card to A. Durvin right or wrong decision it doesn't matter referee laying down a marker well, I, I, I can't really disagree with the award. It's one of those that you, you can't be surprised if it's Yeah, but given. again, Longford have brought down themselves. Too much back passing towards the goalkeeper. A poor kick from Lee Stacey. And Durvin with the foul and it's brought about this free kick. Darrell Walsh will whip it in here. He goes for this shot to the top right-hand corner, but uh, it uh, doesn't uh, find the target. Effort. Not a bad effort, though. No. It wasn't that far away, but Lee Stacey had a judge that it was always going to be slightly off target. So... Uh, good good idea wasn't that far away Lee Stacey has the goal kick now for Longford Town so he had that Nathan Coleman opportunity from that poor back pass and then I suppose that three kick there from Darrell Walsh as Lee Stacey launches that ball down Greg Henry wins that battle with Rob Mandy and Ian Turner knocks it on towards Conor Drynan but it's headed back into the cove half and who will get that one it now comes out to Carl Chambers uh, a bicycle overhead kick cleared by the head of Greg Henry and uh, that's knocked on by Nathan Coleman, but then played back to Lee Stacey. And Lee Stacey will just uh, bring the ball outside his own 18-yard box. And he launches that, well, to nobody really in particular. Mm -hmm. And co defence, when that comes to Captain Pierce Phillips, no, it doesn't. It's now with A. Durvin and Carol Chambers loses possession to Ian Turner. But A. Durvin wins that back and plays it back. But Joe Manley will allow this to go back to Lee Stacey, acting as a bit of a sweeper there. He changes direction and plays that out to the right is Shane Elworthy to Matthew O'Brien back to Shane Elworthy good play there Adam Evans is there as well but it's cleared by the uh, Cove Ramblers defence and Joe Manley would just head that ball back to Lee Stacey who throws it out to the left back Carl Chambers Carl Chambers takes a touch of the outside of his boot and just a little chip towards Rob Manley who heads that ball on to Dean Byrne he's under pressure from John Kavanagh holds the ball up brilliantly he's looking for options and support he turns he's uh, still not getting many options there he goes around Kavanagh but he's dispossessed by Greg Hen Henry and he knocks it out for a corner for Longford Town yeah I thought he might have just overdone it there for a second uh, Dean Byrne I thought he might have released it a little bit quicker he had a man on the overlap but he's got brilliant footwork he, he can get himself out of the tightest of situations and that's what he's done there he's, he's won a corner for Longford and it's going to be taken by Matthew O'Brien so Matthew O'Brien with this corner starting the game against Cabin Tilly last week but in a, a sterling display and he's going to take this corner from the left there are six Longford Town players in there towards the penalty spot it goes towards Adam Evans with oh. a header and it's just arcing about a yard wide but it didn't really have the pace I think Sean Barron knew that it was off target yeah it was a uh, chip back he was well pat he was probably uh, about 15 16 yards out there Adam Evans and I'm not sure wh wh whether maybe he was supposed to head that back across the goal but he's taken on the header and gone for goal but it's floated wide of the of the near post but uh, well picked out by Matthew O'Brien but uh, it was always going to be difficult for, for Evans to score from there 
So it was the Kevin Chester down, tries to knock it through to Ian Turn down the right, but Joe Manu will get across and just put that out safely for a throw. And we've 21 minutes and 42.624 seconds played here of the first half, and it's been left to John Kavanagh. John Kavanagh. About 10 yards from the Longford Town touchline. He plays it to Coleman. Coleman, I don't know who is he trying to find Turner there, but it wasn't a great ball, and it goes out for a throw in to Longford Town. So Longford Town have the throw with Carl Chambers, five or six yards from his own end line. Joe Manley's there. Dylan Hand is just pointing, and he's in space, but he goes to Rob Manley instead. He doesn't get it, and it comes to the captain, Pierce Phillips, and Pierce Phillips uh, plays that across to Lee Devitt and back to Charlie Lyons. Charlie Lyons will switch that across, to uh, Walsh and Walsh will play that down the wing and it's uh, Stephen O'Leary he's dispossessed and Longford Town get, regain possession and Mick McDonald just play that back to Lee Stacey and Lee Stacey will knock this ball out to uh, Kyle Chambers and Kyle Chambers oh, cuts inside Ian Turner and comes away with the ball and plays it to Matthew O'Brien who he disguises that back pass to Joe Manley and Joe Manley back out to Carl Chambers on the left here and he's going to switch play he's going to try and find Adam Evans but two uh, co-players there Daryl Walsh and uh, uh, Stephen O'Leary I think it is uh, intercepting there but Longford Town still have the ball and it's cleared by Walsh but only as far as Adam Evans and Adam Evans on the edge of the box goes inside the box though and it's blocked out for a corner by Daryl Walsh good defending by the co-man really good ball from Aid Irvin there picked it up on the centre circle got plenty of zip on it out to Elworthy that gave Elworthy plenty of grass to run into and uh, he gets uh, gets the ball to Adam Evans who, who gets a shot away or a cross away and is blocked and out for a corner but that's the type of pass Longford need to try and find more because as I said they've been going back an awful lot but Aid Irvin he tried to unlock the defence with that first time ball but it's going to be Adam Evans to take this one he puts a low cross into the area it's cleared away but it comes to Joe Manley is he going to take the shot on oh, he is Joe Manley oh, oh and that was not far away at all no it's sort of a, a half clearance by Charlie Lyons he didn't get enough purchase on his clearance it came back out to Joe Manley and you would have thought with an effort like that curling effort was his brother that was shooting but it wasn't yeah, it was the defender you Joe might Manley. have a better memory than me I can remember Joe Manley absolutely cracking the crossbar in two here uh, earlier on in one of the games in the That's season right. can you remember what game that was I can Cap <laughs> Teeley, I think it was, yeah. Uh, the defeat against Cabin Teeley, he had a shot from 30 or 35 yards out and he almost broke the crossbar. But again, the ball goes back to, to Lee Stacey. He does well to clear this one, Stacey. He finds Adam Evans. Good first time touch into A. Durvin. Longford re recycled the possession well. It's with Shane Elworthy now, who's always looking to go up the line. And that was a good pass from Elworthy, but it was well intercepted there by uh, Daryl Walsh I have to say that was good defending uh, sniffed danger there snuffed out by Shane Elworthy in, in helping out in the Longford Town defence there so we have played uh, 25 minutes not as action packed as the last home game against Galway but we're, probably, we're probably happy about yeah, that we probably are <laughs> So throwing to Longford Town, Elworthy plays it to Matthew O'Brien. Matthew O'Brien back to Elworthy, tries to play it to Adam Evans and wins the throw. And quickly taken by him to Rob Manley. And Rob Manley on the pressure from Charlie Lyons. And it goes off. Is that Stephen O'Leary out for a corner? No, I think it's gone out for a throw. It was a, a throw, hard look it? there. It's just clipped yeah. the, the corner flag on the way out. You don't see that too often. No, you don't. The Steve bounce of the ball went against Longford there. But Steve they have a throw in high up the pitch here. Stephen O'Leary can see the throw in. And what's the referee going to decide there? It allows play to go on. Connor Drynan has possession, can play uh, on the wing or up front, and he's in a battle there with, is it Dylan Hand? And the referee awards a free kick. Yeah, I'm not sure how he's come to that Dylan conclusion. Hand, I thought was it was going to be um, a free kick in the favour of Dylan Hand, and uh, Darrod Doyle not happy on the, the sideline about that one. But um, one of the softer awards. Yeah, certainly. So a free kick to Cove Ramblers, uh, just halfway inside their own half on the left, and uh, just playing it back to Sean Barron. And Sean Barron will play that ball out again to the left and it's launched forward towards Nathan Coleman and that's a, a free as Mick McDonald is adjusted to foul Nathan Coleman yeah. and a free kick to Cove Ramblers halfway inside the Longford Town half and uh, this could be more danger for the Longford Town defence. Cove pretty decent at set pieces Kieran. Yeah, I think Mick McDonald's been done for climbing, as they call it there. He's just he's he's got on the back of the Cove man as he's gone up for the header, and as a result, the free kick's been awarded. But Tony, I have to say, I'm a little bit concerned early on about the lack of service Rob Manley is receiving. He's been very very isolated up there. He certainly has. As Walsh whips that in, but straight into the waiting arms of Lee Stacey, who launches it quickly. Good idea, but that's overcooked. And even though Dean Byrne is fast, Speedy Gonzalez wouldn't have reached that one. Yeah, and Ed Irvin has given his uh, his goalkeeper a bit of a telling off. He's one of the younger players in the side, A, but he's uh, he's never shy of an opinion. And uh, he's disappointed with that distribution there from Lee Stacey. 
Uh, I take it, Kieran, he'll miss the next game. He'll come in for the next game, will it? Well, do you know what, Tony? It's probably no harm going into the playoffs. Uh, obviously, Longford have to get the job done here tonight. You wouldn't like to be without Ed Irvin going down to Wexford if they need a result, but um, it clears the it clears the slate, as they say. Uh, you might remember Jose Mourinho famously doing it with uh, Real Madrid, getting two players uh, yellow cards, um, so they wouldn't miss the latter stages of the Champions League. Now, he obviously hasn't done that this evening. He made a foul, and he's been punished for it, but uh, if Longford can get the job done tonight, it wouldn't be the, the biggest disaster in the no. world. It certainly wouldn't. And you have John Cameron over the ball. You've Ian Turner just placing the ball down. Picking uh, up a lot of free kicks in these yeah, areas, aren't they? Are, yeah, 30 yards out in a, uh, just right of centre. And Daryl Walsh is there with Ian Turner. They're having a bit of a discussion. There are five Cove players on the edge of the Longford Town box. Who's going to take it? Is it going to be Turner? It's not going to be Turner, is it? It is Turner. Plays it short to Walsh, who lets fly, but it's blocked by a Longford Town defence, the wall. And uh, it is Dylan Hand, who was in a bit of trouble there, but has put out for a throw in to Cove Rounders. Ian Turner takes it quickly, and that's to Kavanagh. Kavanagh gets to the byline, crosses in, but it's put out for a corner by Joe Manley. That must be about seven corners that Cove had. They had the four in a row. Yeah, and I think John Kavanagh has won most of those corners. That was a lovely bit of play there. He uh, took the ball on the spin, drove towards the goal line, got his cross, and it was blocked. But another corner here for the Rams. And it's uh, Connor Drynan who will take this corner for the Ramblers and he whips it in deep towards the back post there Dylan Hand with the header Dylan there good Hans, defensive header yeah getting to that ahead of uh, Daryl Walsh and Daryl Walsh goes across now to take the throw in for Cove Ramblers so under a bit of pressure here under the cosh of Longford Town but fortunately the, the net hasn't been rattled by the Cove visiting yeah, team. He's, he's shaping as if this is going to be a long one, a Rory Delap special. Yeah, towards Conor Drynan, is it? It goes over Conor Drynan. Brilliant clearance by Mick McDonald, but it's headed back in. And it's cleared by Longford Town to Dean Byrne, and Dean Byrne plays out to Carl Chambers. Carl Chambers whips that ball down towards Rob Manley, but that's brilliant play by Greg Henry, he Greg Henry, who anticipated that move across and put it out. Two balls on the pitch. Where's Adam Kirby? Yeah, uh, FAI Cup final goal. <laughs> So that's a long, long time ago. We haven't been in one for quite some time. Kyle Chambers to Dylan Hand. And Dylan Hand, well, that's intercepted by Pierce Phillips. Comes back out to Dean Byrne. Dean Byrne plays it back to Joe Manley. Joe Manley to Kyle Chambers. Back to Joe Manley. Joe Manley on the pressure from Drynan. And good pressurising from Drynan winning the throw. And Ian Turner will take this. Yeah, we kind of pointed it out early on in the game about Cove leaving two men up there. Aside from an attacking perspective, they've almost done that as a defensive mechanism more than anything. They're really, really pressing the Longford back four when they have possession and they're forcing those type of mistakes. And we've said it a few times now, Longford, their first thought tonight a lot of the time has to been try and go back with the ball and Cove have just uh, made that mistake by giving it to Rob Manley who's played it off to Adam Evans. His first touch wasn't clean though. But Brilliant he has defending by Darrell Walsh. Mm. So uh, the internal left the front to John Kavanagh and the miscommunication of the front. Longford Town winning possession. Rob Manley to Adam Evans. But Daryl Walsh with great defending there. And Longford Town are, have won a few corners now. It's at least four corners for Longford Town. Yeah, so Adam Evans going across to take this. And there are six Longford Town players in the box there. You have Dylan Ham, Mick McDonald, you have uh, Joe Manley, you have Dean Byrne, you have Matthew, Matthew O'Brien on the edge of the box. Rob Manley is there. And here comes some Adam Evans. Curls it in, out swinger. Oh, brilliant keeping by brilliant. Baron. Joe Manley and Rob Manley were both there waiting to pounce if the keeper missed it, but he didn't. And Cove can break on the counter now, but that's brilliant defending by Dylan Hand and uh, clears it back to his keeper, Lee Stacey. Crucial mm. interception from Very Dylan Hand. So. Longford were, th uh, they were threatening to be caught on the break there as that corner was, was cleared away by Cove, but uh, Dylan Hand racing back and he's grown into that defensive midfield role quite well, for, uh, given it's only his second game in that position. Yeah, it worked really well last week against Cabin Tealy, and so if it worked last week, why not do yeah. the same again? Of course, he's a week. young player, he has a lot to learn, but um, you know, a new position, he seems to have just uh, really taken to it, so uh, we'll see how that develops. Uh, and was whipped on Dork beforehand? Yeah, and he was quite well regarded as well. I spoke to the likes of John Gill about him when he signed for the club, and John had really, really positive things to say. He said he was probably unlucky not to earn another contract with Dundalk, but given the amount of defenders they have at the club, and with the likes of Andy Boyle coming back in the summer as well, it was just uh, a case of he was more likely to pay, play football elsewhere, and he's come to Longford trying to make a name for himself, and he's, he's done well so far, I have to say. 
John Kavanagh with the throw and just inside the Longford Town half. He throws that to Ian Turner, who gets away from Dean Byrne. He plays it to Nathan Coleman. And Nathan Coleman tried to play it into space, anticipating that there was somebody running on the overlap, but there wasn't. Longford Town never thrown. And who's taking that? It's Carl Chambers coming over with the ball here. And there's Joe Manley there, and he just plays it. That's a uh, hallmarks of a foul throw, but he gets away with it. And uh, the, the previous down. one by Cove was, was, was definitely a foul throw as well. But I think we've said that a few times on commentary. It often does be let go by, by referees and linesmen but A. Durbin nice footwork there to get away from a bit of cold pressure and he finds Shane Elworthy down the right hand side Elworthy races forward he looks for Adam Evans but that's well intercepted yeah and Cove will launch an attack there towards Nathan Coleman he chests it down but he's offside I was thinking he was offside of course to wait till he touches the ball now quickly taken out to Matthew O'Brien and that's into no man's land and Sean Barron just go across and get that ball really played short to Charlie Lyons no because Adam Evans had seen that option Greg Henry is there he's John Cavanaugh marked here on the right but probably launch it down maybe towards Nathan Coleman in the centre now he goes towards Ian Turner but that's over hit and it's off the head of Carl Chambers Greg Henry will get that before Rob Manley and he, he turns Manley and plays that down does Henry but that's going to go harmlessly out for a throw in to Longford Town I so, think that's probably an indication of what we've seen so far there, Tony, that, that long ball straight out for a throw. And both teams, it, it's very, very rushed, a lot of their play at the moment. They're both giving everything they've got, and why wouldn't they? They're fighting for a place in the playoffs here, but at the moment, the quality everything, is poor. The quality is poor. Everything seems very, very rushed. And Cove, of course, they're putting high pressure on the ball as well, so that, that's not helping the game, but uh, they're, they're doing what they have to do to try and win as much possession as they can. But both teams, when they get that ball, they need to really try and use it a little bit better. They certainly do, and it's Lee Stacey uh, playing that ball out to Joe Manley and, and get a bit worried with this uh, ticky-tacky at the back and here comes Joe Manley again and he plays it to Dean Byrne on the halfway line. Now he goes inside the Cove half and splits two uh, uh, Cove players uh, towards Again, Carl it's just Chambers rushed there from Chambers. He takes a, a slightly poor first touch and he panics and he tries to get the ball away as quick as possible. I wouldn't mind Dean Byrne has split uh, Ian Turner and John Kavanagh brilliantly with yeah, that he just used a little ball. Yeah. Outside of the foot, a little bit of skill from Dean Byrne, but we, we probably need to, someone like him to get on the ball a little bit more and calm proceedings down and try and bring other players into play. And we've, we've mentioned it already. Rob Manley has seen very, very little possession so far. Yeah, and if memory serves it right, he's got about four assists this season, but I don't think he scored yet this season. Of course, he was missing a lot through injury as well, so it's a free kick to Cove Ramblers, and Sean Barron will take this, the goalkeeper for, for Cove, and 34 minutes on the clock. I suppose... A draw is about fair at the moment, Kieran, would you think? Yeah, I suppose the best chance was was the one Longford put on a plate for uh, for Cove when Joe Manley played it square across his own box and Lee Stacey uh, came out and made a nuisance of himself and, and uh, denied a shot away. So um, neither team has really created any chances of, of real note so far. And it's Cove will try and launch an attack. It's played down towards Nathan Coleman by John Kavanagh, but uh, Joe Manley gets there ahead of him. And uh, Joe Manley has the ball and he plays it to Carl Chambers. Back to Joe Manley, and Joe Manley will whip that down and goes out for a throw into Cove Ramblers. Kind of stop start as well, Kieran, this game. Yeah, so far, I think we've, we've said there's just been a real lack of quality so far. Um, both teams are, are mixing up their attacks, and one minute they're trying to play short, intricate football and, and find a breakthrough that way, and next minute they're going long and the passes are over hit and they're going out for goal kicks and throw ins. And as you said, it's just, it's just not giving us a flow to the game. Yeah, and uh, Pierce Phillips, the captain, played that back to Charlie Lyons and knocks that back to Sean Barron. Back out to the left to uh, Charlie Lyons, and Charlie Lyons will whip that down towards Conor Drine and gets a head on, but there's nobody there but the Longford Town keeper, Lee Stacey. Chanel Worthy was just looking over his shoulder to make sure there's nobody coming through. Stacey launches this, but that goes harmlessly back to Sean Barron. So a pass from one keeper that's, to the that's other. It's not the first time we've seen that so far from Lee Stacey, where it's gone from one keeper to the other. And I was out here quite early, and he was doing an awful lot of work on his kicking before the game but we haven't really seen the benefits of it so far he's, he's picked out one or two good passes but giving away possession very very cheaply there at times and Cove they're caught playing into their own back line again and Rob Manley intercepts and he finds Matthew O'Brien good touch from O'Brien to open up the pitch for himself uses his footwork there to get away from a couple of defenders and he finds Carl Chambers out on this left hand side Chambers with a dink cross in but that's meat and drink for Sean Barron 
Yeah, he just gives the goal to Greg Henry, Henry who let it go, and Barron has it, and he throws that ball out there. There just doesn't seem Steve to be O'Leary. any real uh, pattern to the play at the moment, no, Tony. There there's little no. bits and pieces like that, crosses going in and nobody getting on the end of them and, and other bits and pieces, but there's no real... We're not seeing any link-up play, really, between the likes of Manley and the likes of Chambers out on the wing, so it's been disappointing for us half so far from a long point oh, of view. Oh, very. Uh, it's been a disappointing game to watch. Not much quality there. One of the two pieces of quality, but uh, poor enough first half, to say the least. I think we're seeing the benefit of Cove playing two up front because as I touched on aside from having more options when they receive the ball they're, they're causing Longford to make a lot of mistakes whereas Manley he can't really go and press on his own because he's only one player he can't cover an entire back four on his own but uh, he's also isolated when Longford received the ball certainly is and Nathan Coleman has possession gets inside as it Manley and he plays it across and it's cleared by Carl Chambers but it hits off Ian Turner and goes out for a throw in to Longford Town so again a bit of luck there yeah Longford are definitely living dangerously back there high pressing is really causing Longford yeah. problems and you're surprised by that because Longford play this way where it's all about possession football and playing out at the back so you think they'd be used of, of teams pressing them high like this but they just seem to be uh, really really ruffled out there tonight by, by, by Cove and you know what's worked really well for Cove they, they were kind of playing three up front with Ian Turner but since Ian Turner's just dropped back a bit deeper and just gone with the front two uh, he's a creative player and it, it's led to a lot more uh, attacks from Cove causing Longford Town problems as here comes Drynan Connor Drynan he has possession of the ball and knocks it back out here and uh, Cove still in possession of the ball comes out to Stephen O'Leary but Stephen O'Leary doesn't have to do anything because it's a free kick awarded two Cove Ramblers so yeah Ian Turner has a good pedigree about him Kieran yeah very much so we, we touched on it already himself and John Cavanagh are probably the two really experienced players in that lineup. and um, they've lost a couple of really good young players in, in recent years Cove as well uh, that run to the EA Sports Cup probably did them no favours I think it, it probably showed a, a few players that they had that they lost obviously Denzel Fernandez went and uh, they lost uh, Kabia as well but uh, the experienced players have come in like Turner and Cavanagh and they've done quite well as there's a shot towards goal by Nathan uh, Coleman. Yeah, Coleman, who as I say, he's been very, very busy. He's probably been one of the more uh, busy players up there for Cove so far in the uh, the opening 38 minutes. But again, it was a bit of a snapshot from him. It's just a, an indictment of the game so far. No real quality. Yeah, and, and uh, Darrell Walsh with the free kick, but easily cleared by the Longford Town defence. And as you said, the snapshot there and wasn't troubling Lee Stacey. And Charlie Lyons wins that header, but Longford Town do gain possession, but uh, they lose it. And uh, I think that was Pierce Phillips with the ball there. And it comes back out here, and it's cleared by Carl Chambers' head to Manley and Rob Manley to Matthew O'Brien. And Matthew O'Brien under pressure from Pierce Phillips wins that ball, but then Carl Chambers tackles him. But Stephen Leary should get that head out of Evans, but neither of them get that. It's Darrell Walsh who got there instead. And hey, Durvin plays it down, but hit back down long for town half by Darrell Walsh. Mick McDonald takes a touch and ricochets it off. Drawing an out for a throw in too long. You can take a town. breath now, Tony, because uh, neither team is, is holding on to possession at the moment. I don't think we've seen a passage of play where a team has put together four or five passes on, uh, consecutively. And again, that was it there. Both teams just gifting possession back to each other. Yeah. A lot happening, but nothing happening. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sums it up in a nutshell. Darrell Walsh, does he get the better of uh, Manley? He does. And it could come away, but Carl Chambers will get there with the head towards Dean Byrne. Dean Byrne, a touchdown. Pierce Phillips at his heels, but comes all the way back to Longford Town keeper Lee Stacey. Lee Stacey will launch this down the wing towards Carl Chambers. Kavanagh wins that header, clever defending there. Pierce Phillips wins that header. Uh, knee down by Ian Turner. Ian Turner to Nathan Coleman. Good one, two, back to Ian Turner. He's in space down the right. His man he comes across, he whips it in, but there's nobody there. It's too deep. And even Stephen O'Leary, who was really the only player coming into the box, it was too high for him. I've got to have a little bit of sympathy there for Ian Turner. He's pointing at the pitch, and the, the surface here is absolutely excellent at Bishopgate, as it always is, but it did just take a little bobble there. And, well, that was good defense, a good play by Coleman. That was one of the probably the better passages of play we've seen so far a nice little one two around the corner sent Ian Turner down the wing and unfortunately for him the ball did just bobble as he, as he went to, to get the cross in but uh, they're winning a lot of the physical stuff and, and the aerial battles uh, Cove at the moment and that's disappointing from a Longford point of view because uh, there's only so much you can do about getting the pass and going you know some nights it's just not coming together but if you've been beaten for the work rate and the physicality that is slightly worrying that's a shove in the back there and it's a free kick to Longford Town I think that was Charlie Lyons with the push in the back there it is indeed Charlie very very Lyons. cheap foul to give away there he just shoved uh, yeah, Manley in the back cheap foul, they haven't really done foul. they haven't done that so far Cove they've been very disciplined in their defending but they've given Longford a chance now to get a dangerous ball into, into that penalty area yeah and Adam Evans who's been taking the corners on the right he's over this ball of course no Sam Verdon Sam Verdon dislocating his shoulder so he's out for a while 
Big loss to the Longford Town cause, but Adam Evans has been playing well for Longford Town. And he's over this ball now. He's about five or six yards away from the ball, takes three steps and dinks it in towards Dean Byrne. Just too high for Dean Byrne, and it goes through to Sean Barron. He tries to launch a counter attack and he tries to play that ball up the field there to Ian Turner. But Ian Turner, well, he didn't have any support in Longford Town. Deal with that, and it's a throw in two. Cove Rambles. Lovely touch from Stuart Ashton on the sideline there, uh, well, a uh, well respected man in Cork circles but um, just going back to that free kick from Adam Evans I thought it was into a very good area and it just got away from Dean Byrne but again a good idea from Evans. It certainly was and there he is launching that down but that's just uh, safety first clearing all the way back to Sean Barron, the Cove keeper and uh, he launches that ball out to Daryl Walsh uh, and it's knocked back to Sean Barron and Sean Barron will launch this towards John Kavanagh, but John Kavanagh just doesn't read that right, and Carol Chambers picks up possession here for Longford Town, and Carol Chambers plays that ball to Matthew O'Brien, but he's intercepted by Pierce Phillips. Pierce Phillips goes back inside to Kavanagh. Kavanagh to Phillips, the captain. He plays it back to Greg Henry. Greg Henry, he'll launch this down the wing, but Eden Turner won't get that. Carl Chambers, header wins that instead. Comes back to Greg Henry, and Greg Henry plays that ball back to Barron, who knocks it out to Charlie Lyons, centre defender, who's their top goal scorer, four goals. He's looking for options. Plays it out to Walsh, and Walsh back to Lyons, and Lyons takes a touch, and now he plays it. Uh, and gets it back so they're just keeping possession here at the moment yeah uh, I have to Cove. say I've been impressed with um, Phillips though the captain so far he's, uh, he's doing a lot of the, the, the dirty work in the midfield he's winning a lot of aerial battles he's, he's picking up 50-50s and then he's trying to get the, the play going again as Cove looked to spring that back forward a ball over the top but again a crucial header there from Mick McDonnell certainly was Nathan Coleman was hoping to capitalise on a missed header but Mick McDonald doesn't miss too many of them and uh, Charlie Lyons gets their head of Rob Manley and clears it to safety and it'll go out for Longford Town throw and we played 40 three uninspiring minutes yeah again O'Brien there ball into a decent area but Manley has a lot of running to do and Manley this is a uh, this is like the start of the season where we were talking about him being isolated from the team and from the midfield and I'd seriously be considering putting a second striker up there alongside him in the second half because he's he's had very very little to work with. Yeah, I think four four two would be an option. Especially to go with, with Cove playing half. that shape, yeah. you can match them up. You're not really going to be outnumbered in the midfield. I know Turner's dropping in there at times, but uh, you'd you'd hope Longford would have the quality to deal with that. I, I think Manley really needs some help up there in the second half. And no better man than put up front with him than Dean Byrne, even though Dean Byrne has yet to score, but. Uh, of course he had that long layoff and yeah, of uh, course they've got Callum Warfield on the bench as well have. but he's maybe a little bit similar to, to Rob Manley I suppose so uh, you might be right they might just try yeah, someone I think like you need the contrast of Byrne and, yeah. and Manley up front that's Coleman oh nice little dink off to uh, Ian Turner Ian Turner plays that and it comes back out here Cove will try and launch an attack but uh, kind of trying to lose possession but Nathan Coleman goes up with Joe Manley comes out to John Kavanagh John Kavanagh he dinks to the right and then cuts back inside left and plays that ball to Pierce Phillips, the captain whips it across, it ricochets off Stephen O'Leary and then cleared by the Longford Town defence, another good move there by Cove. Yeah, pinball in the town area, they're very very lucky that that didn't fall to, to a Cove player but a really good play again from Phillips, that's a position we haven't really seen him pop up in, he broke away down the right hand side, good intelligence from him, he's seen the space and he, he makes the run at just the right time to get that cross in there but Longford, they are really living dangerously at times. They certainly are living dangerously, that's for sure. And Cove Ramblers are throwing down to, towards, I think that was Ian Ter Turner was the intended target, but it doesn't get to him. But Cove will try and build again. And uh, it is launched to the box there. But it's played by Mick McDonnell and Longford Town win a free kick. Yeah, yeah, flag up for offside, but uh, the visibility isn't great here at the moment. There's a, a really, really strong mist coming there down. So uh, that ball is going to be extremely wet uh, in the next few minutes. So. You're going to have to get the pass and spot on because if it's even just two yards away from, from your intended target, it is going to run away from them. But uh, Longford will restart play here. And just with this one kick. minute of additional time at the end of this first half. And it's uh, goalless. Of course, Cove do need to win this game. I'm sure they, they do. They, a draw will yeah, mean they can, that only, Cove they can, can only catch. play this yeah. way for so long. They're yeah. going to eventually have to hit a button after 65, 70 minutes and, and throw bodies forward. So perhaps Longford can be a little bit more patient than they normally would. They can probably wait and, and try and get Cove on the counter attack. But because if Cove were to win the two games that they have, uh, Shamrock Rovers 2 and tonight, and Longford Town were to lose tonight and Wexford Cove could pip Longford Town on goal difference. Yeah, so it's a, it might be a little bit of a game of chess in the second half. We might be waiting for, for one side to, to make that first move and 
we'll, we'll have to keep a close eye on what both managers do tactically at half time but uh, I'd probably say the start of the second half might be might be more of the same for now so Barron launches this forward and well Nathan Coleman won't get there Manley gets there but uh, Coleman hits off his head to Ian Turner Ian Turner is he fouled by Carl Chambers and the referee says yes so Carl Chambers gives away a foul in a dangerous position Ian Turner there the man who was fouled he gets the ball and who will take this Darrell Walsh has had a few pops Ian Turner has been involved in three kicks and John Kavanagh so. yeah they tried something a little bit fancy the last time there was three kind of overlapping runs and eventually they, they took a, a short one and, and a shot a goal but it went straight into the wall so you're wasting a lot of energy just to hit it into the wall so I think this might be a little bit more straightforward I think they'll probably just get that ball into the area or maybe a shot and goal as I said the ball is wet so Stacey has to be careful with the handling here so Turner runs up to the ball and he whips the shot in on good save by Lee Stacey that was going in the top right hand corner it's crossbar Tony he didn't he, he, maybe he might have got a, a fingertip on it but I it's thought he got a fingertip to it but yeah I, I thought that myself but it definitely did make contact with the woodwork that's a fantastic effort and, and Longford they can uh, be quite grateful that they're not going in one down that was a great free kick. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I was effort. just thinking, I hope you're not putting the curse on it because, and you nearly did because uh, Lee Stacey tipping that off to the crossbar, in my opinion, as the referee blows for half time. So Cove with the best chance there, right at the death of the first half. Yeah, they had a couple of, of decent free kicks, but obviously that was the best of them. That was an absolutely phenomenal effort. And if Stacey has got a fingertip to it, then, then well done to him because he's, he's saved Longford going in at the break, uh, trailing here. But uh, it is nil nil, but for me, I think Cove have probably just slightly edged that uh, that first half. I, I haven't been impressed with this first half display from Longford, and I think Dara Doyle probably has a lot of work to do in that dressing room over the next 15 minutes or so. But still, it's goalless and haven't conceded any goals. Nil nil at half time. Longford Town still in the box seat for the playoffs, Karen. Yeah, and that's uh, where we'll round up the first half coverage. Uh, give this uh, link a share during the halftime break so as many neutrals as possible can join us for the second half. But for now, it's Kieran Burke and Tony G signing off. Nil nil at the break. You're all very welcome back to second half coverage of tonight's game between Longford Town and Cove Ramblers. If you missed the first half, you haven't missed much in truth. It's scoreless at the break. Chances at a premium in that first 45. The best chance came right on the stroke of the halftime whistle when uh, Ian Turner hit the crossbar with an absolutely phenomenal free kick effort from about 25 yards out. We think up in the, the commentary box though, Lee Stacey probably did get a fingertip on it, although the linesman, uh, he just gave a goal kick afterwards. So Stacey perhaps not getting the credit for it, but from a Longford point of view, they were perhaps glad not to go in one down at the break. But we're back here for the second 45. Kieran Burke and Tony G on commentary. And Tony, it doesn't look like there's been any changes uh, in either camp. No, the certainly uh, looks as if it's uh, as you were uh, as Longkertown are ready to get proceedings underway in the second half it's goalless nil-nil between these two sides bidding for the playoffs swept down there and Charlie Lyons to just allow that to go back to Sean Barron you don't see that too often from from a, a tip off uh, they've, they've lumped it straight out of play so I hope that's not going to be uh, a trend that continues throughout the 45 because as we said in the first half lots of hard work lots of industry but very very little quality on show from either side the only real quality we've seen was that free kick just before the break but um, that's not the best start of the second half from Longford certainly isn't and that's launched down and it's missed by Matthew O'Brien and it's Stephen O'Leary whips that ball while he tries to but it comes back out to Dylan Hand to A. Durvin to Joe Manley and Joe Manley launches that trying to find Dean Byrne but that's just going to go out for throwing John Cavanagh on the halfway line on the right for Cove Ramblers plays it to his captain Pierce Phillips he plays it down the wing when it's cleared and Dylan Hand gets a touch of that to Durvin back to Hand Hand tries to play that through to Adam Evans but it's uh, intercepted and Longford Town have it again with Dylan Hand and uh, he's under pressure now Dean Byrne is from Ian Turner but he comes back inside and uh, plays it back there to to Longford Town defence puts it back up to Dean Byrne Dean Byrne switches out to Shane Elworthy but it's too much purchase on that ball and it just rockets very, out of touch very unlucky there Dean Byrne he's used a wonderful bit of trickery to get away from his man he flicks the ball up he takes it down on his ankle and then first time he volleys it across the pitch trying to find uh, Shane Elworthy but unfortunately it just got away from Elworthy but already the tackle's flying in at the start of this second half it was a real industrial first half and it looks like it's going to continue in the second half both teams not given any quarters here Charlie Lyons knocks that back to Barron and Barron will switch play to Greg well no it goes by Greg Henry and uh, it's cleared down towards Nathan Coleman but it's a poor pass intercepted by Chambers and Chambers to hand and uh, given away by Longford Town and Cove Ramblers will gain possession they knock it around their own back Charlie Lyons their own back line Charlie Lyons back to the keeper Barron Barron rolls the ball with his heel 
and out to Daryl Walsh and that's too high for Daryl Walsh and again possession being given away cheaply Longford Town Shane Elworthy with the throw in to Matthew O'Brien back to Shane Elworthy Shane Elworthy down the right to Adam Evans and Adam Evans comes back and flicks that, kicks that ball in towards A. Durvin, but that's clear by the Cove defence. Phillips misses out on that. Lee Devitt gets the clearance for Cove. Mick McDonald, the header hand with the header. Uh, Durvin with the, the volley over his head towards the 18 yard box, but well cleared. And it's coming out to uh, Drynan and Drynan and Nathan Coleman contesting with Matthew O'Brien. And it's Cove give possession away to Dylan Hand. Dylan Hand back to Joe Manley. And Joe Manley all the way back to Lee Stacey. And Lee Stacey will try and find uh, Shane Elwer giving away to Stephen O'Leary and Stephen O'Leary plays that to Dean Turner goal for Cove Ramblers Stephen O'Leary with a great pass from left to right picks out the incoming run of Ian Turner and Ian Turner scampers through and calmly lifts it over Lee Stacey and the Ramblers are taking the lead Karen. yeah well I hate to criticise any Longford player Tony but Lee Stacey I think he has to hold his hands up there that's really really poor distribution from him he's gifted the ball to a to a Cove player who has found uh, Ian Turner at the back post with a brilliant ball he split the, the back four wide open with that pass I'm not sure who it was that got the assist but uh, an absolutely brilliant Stephen O'Leary brilliant pass from O'Leary and a really really good finish there from Ian Turner showing all of his ex experience waiting for Stacey to commit chips it over him and uh, I have to say Ramblers they deserve that lead yeah they, they edged the first half and uh, started to brighten the second half and we're alluding to the, the the two keepers giving possession away cheaply in the first half and and it's led to a goal but not for Longford Town it's led to a Cove Ramblers goal and the visitors are in front by one goal to nil let's see if Longford Town has the bottle to come back and get at least a draw in this contest a draw put Cove out of the equation for the playoffs in terms of catching Longford Town that's again just like the, the kick off that restarted play they just lumped it straight up the, the field and given possession away uh, really really sloppy stuff from Longford and they had a really poor first half, Tony. They didn't really get any kind of patterns to play together and they haven't really shown anything here. I know it's very early at the start of the second half, but again, really sloppy play from Longford and they need to show a lot, lot more than this. Because you really would expect Cole Ramos to beat uh, Shamrock Rovers too, but uh, Longford Town, they can only concentrate on their own results, so they need to get back in this game as Daryl Walsh Oh, good opportunity there. You're drying in the box, Ian Turner in the box with Daryl Walsh, poor cross, and it goes out of place. So lucky for Longford Town. It'd be interesting to see how Cove approached this second half now because we, we mentioned towards the end of the first half how this is probably going to unfold a little bit like a game of chess. Both teams would wait for the other to make a move before they make any changes because we said Cove will be happy to keep it nil-nil and there's off-the-ball stuff here between Adam Evans and, and, and Charlie a, Lyons. Charlie Lyons, yeah. I think... Um, one or the other feels there was a high boot. I kind of took my eye off it, but a, a lot of verbal has been exchanged. But just going back to what I was saying, at nil-nil, Cove, they're happy to hang in there, go to maybe 70 minutes, hope to get something off a set piece or a breakaway. But now they've got this goal, do they keep going and looking for the second or do they sit in and try and make it difficult for Longford? Because Cove have to win this game tonight. They do, and coming at the start of the second half as well. So uh, uh, the gander is up for Cove Ramblers as uh, Dylan Hand wins that header but uh, Pierce Phillips gets the better of the town player Cal Chambers and then cleared by Hand knocked back down towards Joe Manley and there's another off the ball instant there and who's getting booked? It's Adam Evans Tony and he has to be really really careful he, he's threatened to lose the run of himself out there I actually think that was a very harsh yellow card he's not made contact with the man but again the verbals have been exchanged he's getting revved up out there and some of his teammates just need to tell him to calm down because it's absolutely no good if he goes and gets himself sent off here. And Adam Evans felt he was hard done by with that incident with Charlie Lyons and Charlie Lyons was just smiling away but Adam Evans kind of lost the plus temperament wise there and now he's got booked yeah and he just needs to get into his position here and get the shape right because it's gone now you might as well forget about it and again a lack of communication there as two Longford defenders go for the same ball Lee Stacey comes off the line and, and eventually claims but Longford look very very disjointed here they certainly do and that's Adam Evans third yellow card of the season and here he is now looking for the ball he's going to take a quick throw in and he plays it down to Rob Manley and Rob Manley in possession of the ball and he's surrounded by Leary and, and Devitt but he still has possession and he's fouled by Devitt is he? He is and a free kick to Longford Town He's so done this, really well there Rob Manley two players absolutely glued to him either side and he's he's wriggled his way through and he's won the free kick and we've seen that earlier on the season here he won, he won a penalty where he went on a drive and run I, I can't recall what game it was but he has that in the locker uh, Manley when he gets the ball at his feet he can be very very hard to dispossess and he's won a free kick for Longford and, and hopefully they can make something of this now Adam Evans is going to take 
So Adam Evans with the free kick on the end line and about uh, eight, nine yards from the edge of the 18 yard box, two man wall for Cove Ramblers. He's probably uh, just nip it into the back post, whip it into the back post, does he? No, he goes to the near post instead. Oh, and Joel Manley just didn't get enough perch in that. If he did, it could have been a goal, but he, he miskicked it. But Longford Town still in possession. And will A. Durvin get to that? He does, and A. Durvin cuts inside, but then he's dispossessed, gets a ball back, does A. Durvin. And A. Durvin whips that ball in towards Rob Manley. And it's a corner for Longford Town. Good, good play. play by yeah. Durvin and Manley. Good play from Longford overall. It goes back to that free kick from Evans. He plays a little bit of a chip in there. And I think Joe Manley was surprised that the ball ended up at his feet. His reactions weren't great, so he didn't get a, a clean strike away. And he was unmarked as well. Yeah, it was a great chance. But as I said, I just think he's been caught surprised that the ball's landed at his feet and he had so much space. But the corner's whipped in here. Uh, Dylan hand rises. It almost broke to Rob Manley, but Cove cleared their lines. And A. Durvin now collects possession. Can he recycle play? He's going to have a shot from all of 35 oh. yards out. Yeah, I think the keeper yeah. there is a little bit traumatic with that dive, Sean Barron. It's, it's well wide of that, that far post. And, uh, it, it was just uh, tailing off. It was a, it was like, a, what did he call that in golf? Yeah, he's put a, a bit a of fade, fade, a bit fade, of a fade on the it, shot. It yeah, eluded me for a second. A fade on the shot and it just Yeah, well, he's got wide. a fade in the haircut as well, hasn't <laughs> he? I, I, I've actually just robbed that line off the cameraman, James Donnelly, here, so I'll not take the credit for that. But uh, Back to serious matters. He, he was probably better served there, eh, just to get the ball down and try and get it back into the area. But again, there's Longford just rushing remember things remember against Galway Dylan Hand had a, a, an effort like that yeah. just inside his own half from uh, over halfway out and, and nearly scored and a brilliant save by the Galway keeper yeah. well, class save but uh, that wasn't anywhere near as threatening <laughs> on uh, the uh, co goalkeeper We've been treated to a few good goals this season. Uh, of course, Aaron McCabe here against uh, Wexford. And as you said, we almost had that unbelievable goal from Dylan Hand. So we can't be expecting that every week, unfortunately. But again, ball breaks into the midfield here. And Cove play a direct ball for Mick McDonald off for the first time tonight with a crucial interception. But Cove collect here on the edge of the penalty area. And the ball is played in and it's it's offside there. Uh, not sure who that was that received it. Was it the goal scorer, Ian Turner? Uh, Stephen O'Leary was O'Leary the man with the pass in there and it was Drynan that yeah, was Drynan, yeah, he's definitely offside but again that's Cove winning the 50-50s winning the aerial battles and, and that's given them a platform to build off and, and they've done quite well with that at the start of the second half Longford really need to get a grip of this game yeah they started much the better and we've played in the, win, the, the what 10th minute of the second half and Cove much the better side since the resumption and they probably just edged the first half will Coleman get there no McDonald beats him to it but Cove uh, win possession and uh, Turner nearly uh, threaded it through but it's cleared by the Longford defence Charlie Lyons hoofs that ball and will that go on to touch it does indeed and Shane Elworthy shepherds that out under pressure from Leary takes the throw in to Matthew O'Brien and Matthew O'Brien gives the ball away to Leary plays it through to Conor Drynan Here's Nathan Coleman to the left, but he goes for a shot, and he should have held it up. He had Ian Turner coming overlapping on the other side, but uh, he went for a shot, and for Longford Town, that was uh, good because it was a harmless shot that caused no problems for the, the town regard. Yeah, again, I don't like to, to, to pick out negatives, Tony, about a Longford player, but Dylan Hand had a great game in Cavan last week, but he just looks really flustered tonight. Anytime he receives the ball at his feet, he, he's, he's panicked, and he's making a lot of mistakes, and again, he gave away possession there, and, and Cove got that shot and goal away as a result, but... Uh, Longford they're just all over the shop at the moment can Dean Byrne create something he shoots from 25 yards and we almost had a special there from Dean Byrne yeah a good idea just didn't get enough lift over the keeper and uh, Barron got on to that and now Cove will build again here now Stephen O'Leary in possession of ball he's under pressure from Durvin and uh, Cove still have possession of ball off uh, David off Durvin and Matthew O'Brien heads that and Darrell Walsh gets a bit of Adam Evans Pierce Phillips and up and under with a clearance towards Nathan Coleman he gets ahead to it Mick McDonald brings it down and launches it forward to Rob Manley but Rob Manley is beaten by Charlie Lyons but eventually Longford Town win a throw-in which will be taken here by Shane Elworthy yeah and I can see uh, a Longford player getting stripped and ready the far side not sure who it is but Niall Barnes it looks like so it looks like Darrell Doyle wants a bit more width and, and try and get some, some moves going down the flanks but uh, to me Rob Manley he's just cutting a very very frustrated figure up there he's had very very little service and any service he has had it's been scraps it's been little headers it's been balls up to his chest he's, he's had no real good service so far tonight and he's looking very very frustrated up there 
Yeah, he certainly is. And, uh, of course, Noel Byrne's a very tricky winger as well and uh, showed lots of promise, but he just hasn't got too many games this season, Kieran. No, it'll just be interesting to see who he's going to come on for and is there going to be a change of shape, uh, whether Longford might go 4-4-2. It's going to be Dylan Hand that comes off. As I said, it's not been his best night, unfortunately. He had a really good game last week, but he is a young player and perhaps a couple of early mistakes have, have just played on his mind and, and uh, he's not had his best night. But, look, I'm sure the management have a word with him and he'll understand the decision to change it and hopefully he'll bounce back from that but uh, it's Niall Barnes that comes in to replace Dylan Hand and this is the sixth appearance of the season for Niall Barnes in the Longford Town Red and Black but let's see if he can use his trickery and skill to prize open this Cove Regard Ian Turner nearly gets the tackle in there but Longford Town Orlando Chambers launches it in and that was Adam Evans chestnut down but Pierce Phillips does he get the, oh, Pierce Phillips has to be a card. Has to be guilty a card. of a foul on Matthew O'Brien and that could be a yellow card for the captain of Cove Pierce Phillips he caught Matthew O'Brien late and this is a, a free kick in a good position for Longford Town it's about uh, 28 yards out and in a central pushing, position uh, Durban's pushing everyone away he, he wants this uh, Carl Chambers came over to inquire looks like Matthew O'Brien as well but Durban quite adamant that this is his so let's see what the young man can do he scored one goal this season, so will he get a second goal? He's a long way out, actually. He must be 30 yards out. So I want to be a very special free kick if he's going for goal from there to beat Sean Barron in the Cove goals. You know, this is one of those, Tony, it's so central that I think your best option is probably to have a strike on goal. Hope he gets a deflection, Keeple fumbles it, or, or maybe he goes straight in, but you can't really get a decent cross in there unless you work the work it wide and, and then get the cross in on second phase. I think he'll probably have a strike here, right, Aaron. So the referee blows the whistle and here comes Durvin with the shot. He goes low and it uh, took a deflection off uh, one of the players on the wall and it's gone out for a corner for Longford Town and Matthew O'Brien will uh, go across here to the left and take in the corner. Longford Town, where well, we've played 14 minutes of the second half and apart from the last bit of pressure here in the last 60 seconds, it's been all Cove Ramblers in the second half. Matthew O'Brien whips this corner in and it's punched clear by Stacey but yeah I think Rob Manley was guilty of a little push there and it's a free kick to Cove Ramblers and uh, they'll, they'll go with uh, those sort of outcomes from set pieces all day long with the Cove Yeah either line. way a harsh decision or, or not a harsh decision uh, you have to give credit there to Sean Barron he's, he's in a a mountain of bodies there and he's come through and he's got a good clean fist on the ball and got it out of the area so really good goalkeeping from him So Longford Town trailing by one goal to nil and Kyle Chambers just lets that go by him. It's a throw into Longford Town. Joe Manley is there, but uh, he gets the ball and he's going to play it across to Kyle Chambers to take the throw. Just to note, Tony, it looks like uh, Barnes is staying quite close to Rob Manley. I, I wouldn't call it a 4 4 2 as such, but it looks like he's been given instructions to, to stay quite close to, to Manley and maybe play off the, play off the second balls. Uh, free kick there, uh, water to Cove Ramblers, who so lead this game by one goal to nil. And Longford Town always find it tough against the Ramblers Kieran yeah look they're, they're a really well organised side whether it's Stephen Henderson coming here or whether it's Stuart Ashton, uh, Ashton's Cove they're always really well organised they're dangerous at set pieces and uh, they, they definitely won't give you anything easy and, and we've seen that so far tonight but from a Longford point of view the performance has been well below par it certainly has but while you're only training 1-0 you're still in the contest and how many times have we seen teams getting results in games from not playing well hopefully that applies to Longford Town this evening Shane Elway with the throw in and A. Durvin miscontrols that but he gets it back to uh, Worthy he tries to play the Barnes little head on but Greg Henry leaves that to John Kavanagh and John Kavanagh launches that towards Conor Drynham but A. Durvin wins that header but it comes out to uh, Lee Devitt but he loses out but Pierce Phillips gets it back to Walsh here for Cove and uh, good defending there by Shane Elworthy as Conor Drynham was hoping to get on to that pass so it's a throw in here to Cove Ramblers and Darrell Walsh will take this. He's about 10 yards out from the Longford Town end line here on the left. Well, he's more. He's about 15 yards out now. He's going back. He's a couple of options there. Not really many options. He's just coming in the box. But uh, Matthew O'Brien wins that and wins the throw in as well. So Longford Town come away from that. Cove attack unscathed. And Shane Elworthy will take this throw in. Halfway inside his own half. Down towards Evans, no, it uh, goes past him. We'll try and get there, no Shane Elworthy, but that's a, a sort of a weird clearance and an even weirder header from Sh uh, from Chambers. Lee Devitt has it for Cole Ramblers now, and Devitt to Coleman, and Coleman whips that ball out, 
and it looks like is it Kavanagh whips that ball to the back post and Stephen O'Leary was there but it just bounces away from him and goes out for a goal kick. I'm not sure if Lee Stacey knew Stephen O'Leary was at the back post it looked like he, he let the ball run across his six yard box but uh, maybe he did get the, get the angles right there Stacey it's gone out for a goal kick but that's another let off for Longford O'Leary was unmarked at the back post and had that cross <coughs> been more accurate he could have been tapping in to make it two he certainly could have and Lee Stacey launches this down towards the left to Dean Byrne it hits off Dean Byrne and hard to control that and it goes out for a throw to Cove Ramblers <coughs> and uh, John Kavanagh will take this he's just having a word at the bench and he holds on to the ball now looking for the options I think uh, it's Carl running the clock down Tony yeah. but they're, they're well entitled to do that they've got their goal they need this win to, to stay in contention at the playoffs so uh, they're well entitled to run the clock down and, and use that type of game management they certainly are and it's up to Longford Town to curve open defence A. Durvin is allowed to play on there and finds that it's uh, Rob Manley and Dean Byrne back to A. Durvin and A. Durvin back to Joe Manley and Joe Manley out to Mick McDonnell and Mick McDonnell will play it out wide right to Shane Elworthy Shane Elworthy challenged by Stephen O'Leary and it's still with Longford Town as Adam Evans wins possession plays across the Nile Barnes A. Durvin A. Durvin Central to the right to Ail Worthy, who volleys that towards the box. Should have let that go through to his keeper, Barron, who called for it, but he didn't. But uh, Stephen O'Leary has it for Cove now. And uh, drying in his foul by Adam Evans, who needs to be careful here. He's already on a yellow card. But uh, not worthy of a booking that time, for I sure. I think if it was Dara Doyle, though, he'd be having a serious, serious think now about uh, maybe making a substitution there because he is on very, very thin ice. And the last thing we need uh, going down to 10 men when we're 1 0 down on the scoreboard. Yeah, whatever about your chances of maybe picking up a point here, uh, picking up three points would be very, very difficult going down to 10 men. Last season, Longford Town did well against Cove. It was the exception last season. Two wins and a draw in the league. Mm. Uh, 3 1 uh, away, was it 2 0 at home, and uh, a draw to Cove so 7 points out of 9 Longford Town got it. was it last Cove. season though they lost in the League Cup to Cove I think they after, did yeah, uh, yeah. Cup, they lost two, in the, 2 or 3 days after beating that's them that's right in the uh, league but yeah. lost in the League Cup so but uh I, I tend to, when we're at league matches, I only tend to look at the league games. I don't look at the cup games. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's a cup they've done well in the recent years. I mentioned in the first half that great run they had to the final, and they played really well against Derry City. So, uh, look, I think for a club of the resources they have, they've done a really, really good job, Cove, in, in recent seasons. And, of course, they were really close for a couple of years under Stephen Henderson, uh, getting promoted. They got all the way to the playoff final uh, and lost the draw to the... Um, a couple of years ago so they've really punched above their weight at times and they're again given one of the bigger boys in the division plenty to think about here tonight and Greg Henry just throws that ball back to the goalkeeper Sean Barron uh, interesting uh, goalkeeping jersey he's wearing tonight <laughs> yeah as I said in the first half it looks like a, a car tyre has gone over <laughs> with plenty of oil on it too <laughs> and here he goes and he launches that towards Ian Turner well it doesn't reach Ian Turner it was Nathan Coleman who tried to win the header but here's Dean Byrne Dean Byrne Matthew O'Brien miscontrols it gets away with that and uh, Chambers loses out to Turner and Cove will come away does Drynan get there no he doesn't but it comes to Stephen O'Leary tries to find Drynan and it's still with Conor Drynan he back is he's surrounded by four Longford Town players and A. Durvin comes away with that tries to find Dean Byrne but he loses out here's Ian Turner Ian Turner takes a touch he takes a second touch Carl Chambers brilliant defending dispossesses him and comes away and then he loses it and then he gets it back and then he loses it to Kavanagh and then he gets it back uh, Matthew no, O'Brien they can get it over this side Barnes. Tony Adam Evans is in absolute oceans yeah. of space but nobody's seen him Barnes tries to pick out someone but it's intercepted again that was a wasted opportunity for Longford to break and you mentioned there Barnes was there and uh, Dean Byrne was there as well needed a better ball but it didn't come and here is Joe Manley but Joe Manley miss kicks that and goes harmlessly out for a throw into Cove Ramblers. Very disjointed showing from Longford Yeah, Town. there's been no real change from the first half, Tony. It's uh, just a lot of very, very panicked stuff, rushed stuff, trying to get the ball forward quickly. But they're not winning the second balls, and that's the big issue. If you're going to play a direct football up like that, you have to be winning the second balls. But Cove have been first to everything. Even in the first half, I thought Cove showed a lot more work rate. That's really disappointing from a Longford point of view. Certainly is, and uh, Joe Manley wins that header. But now it's, well, it's Adam Evans wins that. He chests it down, then knees it down, takes control of it. 
Great tackle by Pierce Phillips, but Mick McDonald should get there ahead of Dryan, and he does, and kicks it over his head, but it only comes to Stephen O'Leary. He goes up with the header with A. Durvin. Now comes to Pierce Phillips. Pierce Phillips still has possession around three long for town players. Gets better. Joe Manley there, and uh, off A. Durvin. Great defending by the midfielder, helping out uh, his defence, it, it, A. Durvin. It's great play from Phillips, but it's so, so easy from a Longford point of view. He skipped through three players there without even a hint of a challenge, and only for A. Durvin tracking them all the way and getting the block in. That could have been another goal for Cove. This has been a really poor performance from Longford so Best far. team are leading this game. 100%. As Conor Drynan goes across to take this corner from the, the right. And Longford players starting to look very frustrated with each other out there, particularly uh, Durvin. Yeah, absolutely. It's crucial, even if Longford Town do lose this game, to only lose by a goal because goal difference. Yeah, so. and we were already struggling in that column as it was, so uh, it's a really disappointing result so far. Obviously, a lot of football still to be played as Cove race into the area, but one man who will come out with this game with credit so far, Mick McDonnell, he's been uh, oh, superb. The, the, the shining light in that back four for Longford. Good header by Durvin to Rob Manley. He's under pressure on Pierce Phillips. Pierce Phillips is still tracking Manley. There's nobody in the box. Adam Evans is trying to get there. Manley oh. still has it, but Greg Henry intercepts that cutback. And Greg Henley, Henry will just come away with the ball and just launch that down towards kind of Drynan. And it's won by Joe Manley. And Cove Longford have just Town. dropped off here yeah. for a couple of moments now. And, and Longford really need to try and get that ball up the pitch, pick the right passes, because this is a rare opportunity where Cove haven't given them uh, you know, any time on the ball. But that's a really, really poor pass. He's just given possession away. And Cove break away with a counter-attack now. Great ball by Kavanagh to Conor Drynan. And kind of drying and trying to get the better of two Longford Town players. Back heel by Joe Manley to Kyle Chambers. And Kyle Chambers will come away with this ball just inside the centre circle. And he tries to play that ball for Dean Byrne, who's still on side. Well done, Dean Byrne. He shoots! Always going wide, but not far away, but always going wide. Yeah, again, though, that's uh, one of the rare times in the game where Cove have dropped off and they're, they're starting to retreat in towards their own penalty area. That gave Chambers time to work with. He picked out a great pass to Byrne, and Byrne took the opportunity to get a shot away. It was a good clean strike, but unfortunately, and, and just wasn't on target. And Charlie Lyons is having a go at the assistant referee for not awarding offside. Does there such change? Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I actually did think it was offside, but it looks Same like here. there will be a sub uh, for Cove Ramblers here. It's going to be 14 off Nathan, so that's Coleman, Nathan off. Coleman and we'll see who's coming on for Nathan Coleman now in a minute yeah, Coleman had a good first half, Tony. Uh, really gave trouble. Pressing work in particular was very good when the Longford defenders had the ball. He, his work rate was really impressive. Uh, they haven't put the number up of the man who's come on. We'll get that for you in a moment. Uh, it's going to be Dave Hurley on for the Rams. Yeah, he, he's uh, just back from a suspension and he's a good player. Uh, but of course, when you win 4-0 away, you're going to stick with the same team. And yeah. that's probably why David Hurley had to settle for a place on the bench along with Ben O'Reardon. So Hurley onto the field of play. So it would be probably just a straight swap there with Nathan Coleman up front. So instead of Coleman and Drynan up front, it's, it's going to be Hurley and uh, Drynan up front. So Longford Town trying to build another attack as Rob Manley heads that on to Niall Burns, but that's very good play by John Kavanagh. Really experienced defending there from yeah. Kavanagh. Just used the body, lent in, and, and you know, you're always going to get away with that. Matthew O'Brien on possession of the ball for Longford. And that's intercepted, and there is Hurley now. And Cove can build an attack there with Conor Drynan playing it down the right there and that's a foul surely a push on the Longford player but the referee says play on again though Mick McDonald right place right time really good covering there from McDonald using ex his experience and he switches it out the far side now to Elworthy he's got Dean Byrne ahead of him the ball now with Dean Byrne plenty of space for Byrne to work with here will he take on a couple of Cove Ramblers players Elworthy goes on the overlap Dean Byrne goes inside he beats a couple of players but the ball just got away from Dean Byrne and it's cleared up field by the Rams Mick McDonnell again has to be in the right place at the right time he heads it back to Lee Stacey and of course no Aaron McCabe on the bench tonight which is a shame yeah because he's had a great impact off the bench hasn't he Tony so far this season but uh, so obviously Dardoyle he must be able. ill or carrying yeah. a bit of a knock because if he was fit he'd be on the bench because he's been a, a great super sub in the mould of David Fairclough in <laughs> yeah. Liverpool days of yore and of course he's been getting a couple of starts recently because his impact off the bench has been so good that Dar Doyle's been unable to ignore a call for him to start the game so as you said he must be just carrying a bit of a knock here comes Turner stuff. and Turner tries to cut that back and deflects off uh, Longford Town player and into Lee Stacey's arms it deflects 
safely. Oh, what a terrible throw by Lee Stacey. It just dropped out of his hand. And again, a lapse of concentration. He went to throw it long and it slipped out of his hand, but he got away with that one. Yeah, again, his distribution's been poor tonight, Lee Stacey. And Carl Chambers is going to be replaced here by Callum Warfield. So we're definitely going to see Longford go 4 4 2 here because Warfield is an out and out striker. Good hold up player. Very similar to Rob Manley. So uh, let's see what this does for Very Glam. good at knocking the ball on with the head. Yeah, but of course that's no good unless uh, you're going to have the players making the runs because Rob Manley's done plenty of that type of work tonight but he's True. had uh, no one really making the runs off him. So uh, let's see what way Longford go now with their approach. Are they going to try and work the ball up slowly or are they going to go more direct? It's out to Adam Evans here on this left-hand side. He is, of course, carrying a yellow card. Needs to be careful, Evans, but let's see what he can do with the ball. He dinks it up towards Manley, who has been manhandled there, but the referee let it go and it's cleared away by the captain of Cove Ramblers. Again, Mick McDonnell has to be in the right place, right time. He finds A. Durvin, who's checked back. And back again to Joe Manley. Joe Manley goes out the far side to the substitute, Niall Barnes. Back to Manley again. And not a good pass from Manley. Phillips picks it up. Yeah, and a terrible distribution again. But Longford Town win it back. A. Durvin to Matthew O'Brien. Matthew O'Brien switches play to Shane Elworthy. Out to Adam Evans just inside his own half on the right. It deflects off Darrell Walsh. But Elworthy will get there. And Elworthy, oh, that does drain and get there. Mick McDonald is a judge to a foul. Uh, Connor Drynan and he's going to get booked that was poor play by Shane Elworthy and he picks up his fourth yellow card of the season so I'm Mick McDonald sure. with his fourth yellow card of the season there I'm not sure how the referee can have judged that he's pulled his jersey there given that Mick McDonald was in front of the man he was in front, he of, was the in front of the man so how can he have pulled his jersey it's a totally incorrect decision it's a really poor pass from Shane Elworthy to start with he's put his team in trouble but Mick McDonald all he's done is step across the run and he stood his ground he does not have to get out of the way for the Ramblers man he's just stood his ground the players have ran into each other and the referee has a judge that he's pulled his jersey absolutely comical decision from the referee but again Ramblers now with a chance to put some pressure on Longford and it's uh, that you again but it's left uh, Walsh leaves it to Turner this time and hit the crossbar with a, a tip onto the crossbar by Lee Stacey in the first half Elworthy had to be careful there there might have been a slight temptation just to stick the arm out to maybe take some sting out of that because he, he took it right in the stomach but fair credit to Elworthy he stood his ground and he, he squared that one down he took it took it in the ribs and it's gone out for a corner but very easily could have flicked off his arm if he wasn't careful there in corner Turner for Ramblers with the corner for Cole Ramblers just getting set, placing the ball. Will he give a signal? He just uh, gives the signal now, and here it comes. A couple of runs, Pierce Phillips running there, but it's hit to the back post. And uh, that goes wide. Uh, Greg Henry was in there. I think it could have been Greg Henry, the number 24. That was a massive let off for Lomford Tony. Adam Evans at the back post had a clear run, yeah. and he seems to have either let it go or ducked out of the way. I'm not sure what he's thinking, whether he thought there was no Ramblers player behind him, but it, was actually, did. it, it was actually the other uh, player behind Henry. Drynan that had the opportunity yeah he, he certainly didn't check over his shoulder there Evans he took a massive massive chance and it's another big let off for Longford and John Kavanagh won't be in any hurry to take this free kick we have played 74 minutes and I have to say Longford Town Kieran they don't even look like scoring I think Dara Doyle might have uh, talked himself into some trouble here he, he might be he might get away with a yellow of course but yeah, he's picked up a yellow card there, Darrell Doyle. I think that's the first time we've ever seen that here at Bishopsgate, but that's uh, the new rules, of course, with managers back in the, the olden days. As I said, they would have sent him straight to the stand, but he gets the, the, the benefit of a yellow card there. But obviously, with no supporters in the ground, we could, we could hear his conversation with the fourth official, and you always thought he might have talked himself into a little bit of trouble there, but I obviously that, a very frustrating figure. Is, is that Darrell's first yellow of the season, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Cove Ramblers are just 14 and a half minutes plus stoppage time away from a crucial victory remember they cannot get more points in Longford Town but they could pit Longford Town on goal difference offside. He's, he's flat just a bit of confusion there there was a feeling he might have given a free kick but he's, he's given offside there the linesman but again just really disjointed play from Longford there hasn't been any pattern to their play we haven't seen any of the intricate passing that we're used to seeing balls into the feet of Dean Byrne and the fullbacks running off him it's, it's been very direct stuff and as I said Longford they're not picking up the second ball so you can't really create anything in that situation and Cove have been very very comfortable in this second half Kieran, and they do deserve their lead as Barron launches that down they could be further Harry. ahead Tony they really they, could they be further could, ahead yeah. and uh, Phillips wins that to Devis and he plays it down there towards Ian Turner on the pressure from Barnes Ian Turner lays it off to Drynan Drynan back to Ian Turner but he loses it but it ricochets off him and goes out for a throw and fall Longford Town and Joe Manley will go across to take this or will he leave it to 
Now Barnes. 76 does. on the clock now. Longford really running out of time to try and change the momentum of this game. So now Barnes there with the throw on there, Rob Manley. He's very far away from the opposition goal. And win Longford Town win a free kick there. Oh, clever. Preventing a quickly taken three kick for Longford Town. Does Greg Henry. But Longford Town, Matthew O'Brien will leave that to Lee Stacey. And Lee Stacey has this free kick for Longford Town about uh, 20 yards inside the uh, Longford Town half. So he's going to launch this long. Adam Evans is on mat. He can make a diagonal run off the right, will he? And the ball's towards Rob Mandy. Rob Mandy gets a header on nearly through to Callum Warfield. That's cleared out to Drynan. And Drynan will probably just hold play up. He knocks it back to John Kavanagh, actually. John Kavanagh hoofs that down towards David Hurley. And it's one there by Longford Town. A. Durvin has possession now and plays it across with the outside of his boot to Shane Elworthy. Elworthy rampages forward, picks out Adam Evans. Adam Evans back to A. Durvin. A. Durvin turns it to Hurley, plays it to Matthew O'Brien. Matthew O'Brien plays it out to the wing here to Adam Evans. Adam Evans cuts back inside, launches one in there towards Warfield, who gets ahead to it, but there's no power on that header, and it just gently falls into the air. Yeah, if you're going to take keeper. a slight positive from them last few passages of play though, Tony, Warfield winning that header. Rob Manley a couple of moments ago, really good flick on it, almost ran into the path of Warfield who would have been one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper but unfortunately it was intercepted but at least the two strikers now starting to get a bit more involved. I don't know how Drynan got there but he did. He's passed it to Hurley now and Hurley inside the box but he's ballooned that well over the crossbar and again danger there and Longford a bit asleep at the back uh, again, here again Tony it's a massive massive let off for Longford they've been the second best to everything tonight first and second half for me I know the first half was a fairly even contest but I thought the work rate of the Ramblers players just shaded them the first half and they've been much much better in the second now, half now that is terrible Greg Henry the Cove player pushes Colin Warfield in the back and the free kicks are wanted to he go. He actually pulled the jersey of Colin Warfield because you could see the jersey expanding away from the body of Warfield. So How when he blew the whistle, I was expecting a free kick there for pulling the jersey. But yeah. well, that's really, really it, poor it was refereeing. was a foul by Greg Henry on Colin Warfield. End of. And, and yet he and, gives the free kick. And the kick linesman is looking straight across, no more than five or ten yards. How he can't see that? Absolutely, really poor refereeing. Oh, it's a chance here. O'Leary shoots, and O'Leary over the bar. Good effort. It just hopped up on, on him at the wrong moment, Stephen O'Leary. You have to say, if there's any team looking like getting another goal in this game, you'd have to say it's the away side. Well, I'll be perfectly honest. If Longford Town snatch a draw, it'll be daylight robbery. At, the, at this moment in time, unless they can really change the pattern of this game in the next 10 minutes. But there's been no change in the, in the system and the approach from the first half to the second half. And it's just really disappointing all around from Longford so far tonight. One by Pierce Phillips and the head of Stephen O'Leary to Hurley. Back to Stephen O'Leary. Stephen O'Leary tries to dink that through to Conor Drynan. Not a bad pass, but there is Manly Joe to clear the danger to Shane Elworthy. Elworthy whips that towards Rob Manley. He's under pressure and Charlie Ryan's got ahead of back, but it just goes behind Warfield. Here comes Greg Henry to mop up. And is Hurley offside? Yes, he is. Free kick to Longford Town. Yeah, and Hurley should be disappointed with himself there because he was in a good position and there was a lot of space to work with. So if he had got back on onside in time, he could have created something there for Cove. But uh, that chance just um, fades away. And from a Cove point of view, if the Ramblers fans at home are watching this, they're probably thinking we really should be making more of these opportunities now because 2-0... Don't make any doubt about it. The game is done and dusted. But at 1-0, if they concede, their playoff hopes are dead. And remember, they uh, when they played Cabin Tilly at home, they, they conceded a last gasp goal to lose that game. Yeah. Well, we'll be hoping that Longford Town get a last gasp equaliser here tonight. And it's a foul by A. Durvin. Yeah. Of course, uh, a point won't be enough for Longford to secure a playoff. So. No, it'll only be enough to knock Cove out of the equation from catching Longford Town. Uh, that is true. Oh, oh and Elworthy has lost his foot, and that's Shane an unfortunate Elworthy's incident. Elworthy is down injured, and Stephen Leary might capitalise here. Hurley's in the box on Mark. Nobody picking him up. Good play by McDonald. He's been outstanding for Longford Town tonight. The only beacon of light for Longford Town, really. Oh, good offside. header by Hurley, but it's offside and Conor Drynan. Yeah, and I hope Elworthy's okay because as he lost his foot and he, tr he put his hand down to try and keep himself up and, and he, it looks like he's hurt his arm and credit to Mick McDonald, he spotted that straight away. He tucked in and went chasing that ball and he blocked the initial cross. So, as we've said a few times tonight, McDonald has been superb in the back four for Longford, but he's the only one you'd pick out on the field that, that's been a standout performer for the town. Yeah, absolutely. And Lee Stacey... <clears throat> and it would be it, perfect to cap off a good performance by Mick McDonnell if he were to come up with a headed equaliser late on. 
Uh, yeah, just look on Lee Stacey you had to thank him at the end of the first half that brilliant save where I know the linesman didn't give a corner but he clearly did get a fingertip on it and, and force Ian Turner's um, shot onto the crossbar the free kick but he was definitely at fault for that first goal so you've got to be looking at your goalkeeper you're disappointed with his distribution tonight but overall it's been a really poor team effort you can't pick out individual players and, and hold them account the entire team it's, it's been poor tonight and Hurley wrong option David Hurley uh, he had two or three options that were better than having a 30 yard shot and he didn't avail of any of them yeah as I said from a Rambler's point of view if you're watching this you're probably getting more frustrated by the minute because the chances are there to go and kill this game off and, and they're just uh, making poor decisions at times oh and again there's a bit of off the ball stuff yeah, there yeah Dean Byrne and Lee Devitt uh, it was a fair tackle from Devitt but you can understand Dean Byrne look he's come back from a, from a horror injury and he probably felt that was maybe a little bit from behind and over the top and he's reacted slightly but uh, Rob Manley nearly does well to retrieve it but turn it dispossesses and that's an uh, intercepted pass from Phillips by uh, Joe Manley and it's a throw in and it's not looking good for Longford Town 82 minutes and 20 seconds on the clock and the better team are winning but while you're only trailing 1-0 there's always a hope yeah, but from a Longford point of view, there's, there's been really no sign of an improvement from the first half. There's been no sign of a change of approach. I, I couldn't really tell you what system Longford are playing out there at the moment. Uh, they're not passing the ball well. When they go along, they're not winning the second ball. So nothing's coming together. So it's really hard to see where Longford are, are going to get, get a goal from. And David to Kavanagh. Kavanagh tries to find Hurley and does find him. Good tackling by Joe Manley. concedes the free kick. But while that ball's in the Longford town half, Longford Town won't be able to get an equaliser so they need to take a few risks at this stage yeah because I think as we said a point I know it knocks Cove out of the equation but it's not really any real use to Longford so you might as well push men forward and lose this game 2 or 3 nil as, as well, lose not one necessarily with the goal difference well, yeah that's just true <laughs> looks like we're snookered each and every way at the minute here Tony Mick McDonald launches that out for a throw in and I have to say Kieran, usually when Longford Town play there's a period of 30 to 35 minutes that they're very good. Now, yeah. they might I think I've actually miscalculated. I think we only need a point for, for to secure playoffs, what I've been told here. So Yeah, well, you see, because of the way other teams in the playoff contention have to play each other, right. so a point would be enough. Oh. But I, would, I, I wouldn't like to be going to Wexford looking for a, a result no, to get no. into the playoffs. Oh, well, with that in mind, then there is there is still hope here yeah. for Longford, a set piece or a penalty or... or Charlie Lyons luck. clears that out for a throw on Adam Evans there. Good work by Warfield to Evans. Uh, Elworthy picks that ball. He'll probably take the throw and will he throw it to Adam Evans? He does. And Adam Evans, oh, great tackle by Stephen O'Leary. He slides in and puts that out for a throw in for Longford Town. Out to Elworthy. Let's it hop a couple of times. Comes in and whips that ball in. And uh, it's Dean Byrne. And, oh! Matthew O'Brien with, the with the effort there. Dean great Byrne. technique. Dean Byrne, the ball came to him. He Well, I'd say deflected off him rather than he played it to Matthew O'Brien and the ball just whizzed across the box there. Yeah, good clean strike though. A good technique from O'Brien, but that's one of the, the rare shots on goal Longford have had in the, this second half in the match overall. And uh, yeah, they're going to take a risk now, uh, Longford, it seems. I know this is a centre-back coming on. It's uh, Joe Manley going off and uh, it's uh, Joe, Joe Gorman, Gorman coming on. Yeah. But... Um, Gorman is a, is a player that steps into the midfield a bit more than, than Manley perhaps so maybe Dara Doyle's hoping Longford can you see you really don't have a bit more from the back. McCabe missing from the squad tonight which is a big loss uh, I suppose you don't really have any too many attacking options left yeah he'll give you a good threat from set pieces as well um, Joe Gorman so interesting change from, from Dara Doyle as you said his options are slightly limited tonight but you'd wonder when the likes of Lido Latifa on the bench uh, he's not coming on you know he's obviously a more attacking player, so it's an interesting. The, the problem choice. with Lido is he's—I don't think he's fully fit either. That's the other side. Yeah, and, and Dean Bar uh, Dean Zamber, excuse me, is on the bench tonight. And I know, as you mentioned, the first half concussion. he got a concussion. Yeah. So when you see bodies on the bench that, as you said, aren't fully fit, your your options really are limited. So Darrow Doyle playing the the last card he has in his pack here. Yeah, and Dean Zamber. Well, he not known for his goal scoring exploits. He hasn't scored no. this season. Uh, one assist, I think. But he's a combative midfielder, but Longford Town really, really up against it now. Four minutes to go plus stoppage time and losing 1-0 as uh, John Kavanagh goes across to take this for Cove Ramblers. And it has to be said that Cove Ramblers really have deserved this lead and will deserve to win the game. 
throw in to the Ramblers Stephen O'Leary goes down with a bit of a, a, a knock about 30 yards out from goals Hurley tries to play that back to Kavanagh takes a deflection off a town player I think it's just cramp um, is that, that, that O'Leary's yeah. gone down with but if that's the situation then the referee should just tell him to go to the sidelines and be treated because and of course this will just eat into the clock as well and will the referee add all of this time back on at the end of a regulation time so we have a, a stoppage in proceedings as Stephen O'Leary gets treated here. I have to just say, Tony, it's, it's very quiet out there on the pitch. Um, from a Longford point mm. of view, you think there'd be players trying to rally each other with three minutes, four minutes left on the clock, but eerie, eerie silence here at Bishop's Gate. It's, it's, it's almost as if they've thrown the towel in for tonight. I hope I'm wrong and, and they can get something in these last couple of minutes, but um, very, very disjointed performance from Longford so far tonight. Uh, there's going to be a sub here for Cove. It looks like it's more than uh, just a bit of cram for Stephen O'Leary. He's going to be forced uh, off now with that injury. And Christopher O'Reilly is going to replace him. So Christopher O'Reilly into the fray for Stephen O'Leary. And Stephen O'Leary mm -hmm. scored in the last league match between Longford Town and Cove. And the 2-0 win, win for Cove. Stephen O'Leary got amongst the goals along with Conor Drynan. I know you're the man usually for the stats, Tony. Do you know how young uh, that substitute is by any I chance? haven't got a clue. He looks like he a looks very, very, very young, very young. <laughs> Of course, Stephen O'Leary also scored in the 4 0 against Wexford. And uh, Ian Turner has possession of the ball here. Out to Kavanagh, takes a, a ricochet off. Is it Dean Byrne? He's one of the two players there. Whoever it ricocheted off, it goes out for a throw in. And, uh, and this, this will suit Cove all day long. It feels like the ball has been stuck in this corner for the last three or four minutes. So, really good game management from Cove. They're running the clock down really well. As I said earlier, they're entitled to do that. And look, they've earned themselves another corner. So, that ball is not going to be leaving the, uh, the corner anytime soon. No. So. That, that uh, defence for Cove has been rock solid in the second half, Kieran. Hasn't any time there was a bit of danger. They've been reading the final pass well. They've been mopping up brilliantly. And uh, Longford really haven't posed a threat going forward in the second half yeah, at all. Longford need a goal here in the last two minutes and they've only left Dean Byrne up the field. So uh, really, really surprising. They don't seem to be taking many risks at the moment. Longford, that ball's whipped in. Shane Elworthy, good header. It falls to the substitute. Doesn't get a clean strike and it dribbles wide of the goal. Yeah, uh, shot by Christopher going well wide there and no power on it either. So Longford Town have a minute and 22 seconds plus stoppage time. Probably about four minutes to get this equaliser that will guarantee them finishing in the playoffs and that's a little push on Warfield but the referee doesn't see that well, here comes A. Durvin he'll switch it out to Barnes on the left now Barnes will he do a bit of trickery he has Kavanagh to contend with who's been solid at full back all night and that's whipped in there towards Matthew O'Brien gets head out to Adam Evans just the edge of the box and Adam Evans plays that back to A. Durvin, who whips that in, a curling one in towards Warfield. But again, no power on the head of Kieran. No, but at least Longford are getting the bodies forward there now, Tony. For the first time in the game, there was four, five, six men in the penalty area. There was a couple of crosses that were well defended by Ramblers, to their credit. But at least Longford are now sending the bodies forward and taking a risk. Could be a bit too late, though, with just half a minute plus stoppage time left. And that's launched down there and uh, it goes out for a throw in to Cove Ramblers so John Kavanagh won't be in a hurry here he has Drynan, he has Hurley there he has the young Christopher unmarked about 25 yards out from goal but that's way too far away from his throw in so he'll go for Hurley instead just inside the Longford box under pressure Mick McDonnell who plays it off Hurley and it goes out for a goal kick yeah another another tick in the, top, in the column of, of Mick McDonnell tonight he's been absolutely faultless at the back for Longford but Unfortunately, he's been the only one that you'd really uh, say has been standout out there so far tonight. But Ramblers trying to camp themselves in that far corner in the last couple of moments. But at least Daisy now will have a chance to send the ball up the field. We've hit 90 on the clock and the board will be going up shortly. Longford will need a good slice of, of added time here as Stacey sends the kick up towards the substitute. Callum Warfield, good flick on from him in towards the feet of Rob Manley. Manley with a couple of touches. He's forced back, but Longford have the throw. They do off uh, Ian Turner. So Longford with the throw in. And you call it right, Tony. Brian. Four on the board. Four minutes on the board. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, it was uh, Niall Barnes there. A big up and under. Almost had snow on it when it came down. But somehow Longford have regained possession. But again, they give away the ball. And just really struggling to make inroads at the moment, Longford. 
They're going to go direct again, it looks like. Stacey Ball at his feet here. Everyone up in the Cove Ramblers half now. Longford sending bodies forward as Stacey punts it over towards the far side. And Niall Barnes, sorry, Joe Gorman beaten in the air. And, uh, again, Dave Hurley, he's been good off the bench for Cove. Has he won a throw? Indeed he has. Really good play from Hurley. Yeah, very clever play. You can see, see the experience shining through there. And uh, John Cavan again, just taking his time going over to take this throw in. And I have to say, I'm deflated now. I can't see, well, I haven't seen the Longford Town goal coming all half, to be honest. Um, I can't actually remember any time in the game that Sean Barron's meant to save, Tony. That's, that's, we're at home here, and this is really, really disappointing. Barely had a shot on target. I, I would safely say it's probably the most toothless home display of the season. Yeah, even the bad defeats here against uh, Cavan We got goals. And against Bray. We got goals, and look, they were poor performances, but... Tonight there's just been there's been no spark. There was a, a an improvement in the second half of those games, whereas Longford went in after a really poor first half, and they've come out and they've been even worse in the second half. Really disappointing. But look, they've got a free kick here for handball. Can Longford pull something out of the bag? They've got a couple of men standing over this one. Adam Evans looks like he's going to be the man to take it again. Told to Tony, it's quite a central one. So what does he do? Does he try and get a cross in and hope Longford score off the second phase, or does he have a strike on goal? Yeah, it's way way too far out. He's more than 35 yards out here so he'll probably just dimp it in dink it in he does oh it, it ricochets out to Matthew O'Brien who goes down the box referee says play on Shane Elworthy whips that in Greg Henry heads that clear and the referee blows offside. his whistle offside yeah just nothing going right for Longford there even Matthew O'Brien uh, was down injured during that phase so uh, eventually the flag goes up and uh, Longford really running out of time now uh, two the minutes of two, that addition two minute played. warning yeah, as they say in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need a Hail Mary now. Oh, we definitely need a Hail Mary in an hour forever, I think. <laughs> you know, the better team have won this game. Longford Town, they haven't been the better team at any stage of this match. No, they've been beaten to everything tonight. Um, really, really disappointing. As I said in the first half, some nights the quality just doesn't come together, but you can always count on work rate, and I think there's some Longford players tonight that they've let themselves down big time. That looked like an over the tack, uh, over the Devis. top tackle there on, on um, Adam Evans. The Lee Devitt. Le Lee Devitt there took a risk, but well, ninety seconds. This is last chance saloon now. Mick McDonald to score with the last last touch of the game for the equaliser. He deserves it anyways. Uh, Phillips goes up for that, misses everyone. Greg Henry misses, controls that as well. Comes out to. Along for town substitute Dean Byrne has it here now. Dean Byrne has Warfield with him. Still Dean Byrne. Dean Byrne and uh, well, uh, Greg Henry clears that. And Longford Town keeper Lee Stacey coming out, just launch it back in there. Longford Town, it's not a great ball Lee, from Lee Stacey, Stacey. Paul ball, but Longford Town have Adam Evans. Adam Evans dinks that ball in, it misses Warfield, it won't find Rob Manley. And it's cleared by David Hurley. And we have 42 seconds left as McDonald heads that ball back. He gets a bit of drying. And Lee Stacey out to Shane Elworthy. This really is last chance saloon. Terrible oh, ball. That's a really poor ball yeah, from Elworthy. Comes Lovely out to A. Bricks, Durvin. A. Durvin switches play. And it's uh, it's Burns there, and or is it, yeah, Dean Byrne actually whips that ball in, and Matthew O'Brien with the header. He, That's he, all she wrote, folks. Yeah, glanced off the head of Warfield, and Matthew O'Brien got on the header, and it goes over from Dean Burns' initial cross. So that's Shine game over. Cove Ramblers could still finish ahead of Longford Town yeah, on goal go difference. All the way down a trip to Ferry Carrick Park, Longford will have to pull out a massive performance. So we've we've questioned their character in some of these big crunch games in recent years and they're going to have to show a lot of steel now. They're going to have to go to a very difficult place, Ferry Carrick and, and there win. There you go. Because Cove Ramblers have beaten Longford Town by a goal to nil tonight and so it was Ian Turner with the winner for the Rams. So with that now, Bray have 35, Drogheda have 30. So UCD are ahead of Longford Town. And again, there's difference. off the ball stuff here, Tony. Sorry to cut across you, but Adam Evans, uh, he's he's involved with the, with the Ramblers captain here. And Evans just needs to get away and get he off does. the pitch because he, he could, of course, yeah. be booked after the whistle. And that I mean a suspension. So uh, someone just needs to take control out there now because we don't want Longford losing any more players. We touched on already. Darrell Doyle's options were limit off the bench due to injury. He and now A. Durvin will be missing from the Wexford game. Uh, so UCD have 29 points plus 15. Longford Town have 29 points plus 5. Uh, Cabin Teeley of 28 minus 6. Uh, Cove now have 26. And is it plus 1 or plus 2? It's either or. Uh, uh, plus 1 or plus 2. 
and then you've Galway in 23 and of course Galway have to play Bray, Drogheda and UCD so yeah a point would have been enough tonight given the fact that other teams have to play each other the final fixtures well the fixtures to come you have on Tuesday night unless uh, COVID-19 intervenes Galway at home to Drogheda then on Saturday this day week Bray at home to Galway and then the final series of fixtures on Tuesday the 27th of October it's Cove at home to Shams too you'd expect Cove to win that one you know, Galway up against UCD Athlone Town at home to Bray Cabin Teeley at home to Drogheda and Wexford at home to Longford Town and Wexford only five points on the table now of course they had those three or four games uh, where results w were given against them Covid won that game anyways so uh, Wexford I think only had eight points before the deduction of points yeah so. but you have to remember Tony Wexford probably came away from that defeat here earlier on the season where McCabe got the late goals off the bench thinking that they let points slip that night and they did and in fairness yeah they'll be out to avenge that this is not going to be an easy place to go Longford never go down to Wexford and win it a handy three or four nil it's always a scrap it's always a one nil or a two one it's always a really really tough game now look they've got a great record against Wexford and you'll be hoping that'll stand to Longford but this is a situation they shouldn't have gotten themselves into. They should have been winning this game tonight against Cove. All respect to Cove, they were brilliant. They were the far Even better a draw, side. A draw would have done yeah, it. They were the far better side, Cove, but at the same time, they didn't show any brilliant quality. It wasn't the most breathtaking display. Longford Town here at home tonight should have been well able to win this game, or as you said, get a point. But they were outfought, they were outmuscled, and they were out. They, they were outwitted by Cove tonight, and that's really, really disappointing. And it's all going to go down to that game now in Ferry Carry Park. Well, uh, pleasure as always to bring uh, live coverage. Uh, thanks to Gary Riley and James Donnelly in the background tonight doing the, the behind the scenes work. And uh, thanks to Kieran Burke for helping out with the co commentary. From me, Tony G, and the rest of the gang, it's good night. And just to mention before we go, hopefully, Tony, this won't be the last uh, stream. Obviously, we need to wait and see if Longford get in the playoffs. We're waiting for further word from the FEI in regards to streaming of playoff games, etc. But for now, this is our last stream of the season, but fingers crossed we'll be back again soon. So thanks to everyone who has supported LTFC Plus, uh, LTFC Plus, I should say, since its launch. And as I said, hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. But for tonight, it's Kieran Burke and Tony G signing off here from Bishopsgate.